Oh, hello there. Come closer out of the dark and sit around my campfire, why not? My name oh, is of no great importance, but the stories I have to tell you are... Witness, four lost souls journeying together through a grim world of perilous adventure. Be warned, though. The stories are not for the faint-hearted, and once you have heard them, you cannot unheard them. Bear witness to the Vagabond Chronicles.
Hi, and welcome to the Vagabond Chronicles. As you can see, folks, this is a little different. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays and all that kind of shit. I um, hope you're all well. Hello, everybody, to everybody in the chat. Yes, this is live. You can see what time it is. It's now 22.45. So there you go. It's totally live. Um, <clears throat> so hello. Um, hi to everybody in the chat. Thanks very much for coming back. I hope you had a great time, great holiday. I hope you're all well and safe. Uh, the Vagabonds and I, over the period, over the Hoppy Holidays, uh, decided that we wanted to try and put something special together. So what we've done is a Teddy backstory special. Um, we didn't want to really talk too much about it. We were just announcing it and just think, fuck it, here you go. So we're going to play it out tonight. This is part one of two. Um, we've just finished recording the second part, which was really, really fun. And really, I really like it. And also, this explains why Teddy is back in the Vagabond. So that makes sense. And and why they met him the way they met him. Very quickly, sh huge shout out to the mods. Thank you very much to the Twitch mods and also to the Disco mods. <laughs> oh, I call it Disco mods. Ridiculous, really. Um, so yes, yeah, so the Disco mods as well. Uh, we really appreciate everybody supporting the community. Thank you very much for joining us. If you're new to it. This is Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. I've been playing a game like this with these people, uh, actually Clement and Blue are new, but, but with the same kind of group, you know, Tom was one of the hardcore members, for about seven or eight years actually in total. And we decided a couple of years ago during the pandemic to start broadcasting a version, an alternate version of the same characters, hence the Vagabond Chronicles. Um, we hope you enjoy it. If you're not familiar with Warhammer Rules, it's all percentile based, but basically it's like low fantasy version of D&D. Uh, um, so there's still some high fancy elements as well, but it's more gritty, more dangerous, more real, and actually a little funny in, in places. So we hope you like it. This is going to be a special. Um, technically, this should work. Apologies if there's any technical hiccups. I'm going to start it. It is pre-recorded, folks, so just a warning on that. Tomorrow, we have the next live Vagabonds session. So please, if you want to join us, that's going to be at 8 o'clock GMT tomorrow. And then this week coming, we're going to be doing uh, normal uh, streaming stuff, even on a professional stream, as you can tell. Um, I've got a break in between acting work and directing work. So we're going to be doing some more stuff. We're going to do Resident Evil Village, um, continuation of that playthrough, and maybe some other stuff. I'm going to try and get an interview here as well. There's somebody I want to try and interview as well, uh, just to bring them out. Um, so that's it. Um, it's about two hours long, so it's a normal session of the stream. 
Um, Clem is in the chat and he's going to be around if you want to if you want to tell him how bad that song was that he and I came up with about 50 minutes ago <laughs> and just slammed together we hope you liked it it was a little bit last minute um, but it was Clem's idea and I, I went with it so that was pretty cool um, but yeah we did it in like no time we did it basically this afternoon it was ridiculous um, so Clem's going to be around to, to hang out um, I'm going to be in and out but not really around that much I'm afraid um, but I'll be watching with you because um, I've forgotten actually what we recorded um, and I hope you enjoy it um, there's some new characters in it some really fun characters in it so I hope that you really dig it um, it's Clem, myself, Tom and Pete obviously Pete is back after his hiatus away from the Vagabonds. Uh, but we really hope you enjoy it because uh, we put a lot of love into this and it, it worked out really well, we hope. So without further ado, sit back, relax, take in the special of the Vagabonds, enjoy the show. Next week, we're going to play the second half of this. So next Saturday, we'll play the second half of this probably. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for continuing to support the community and being a part of it. All right, folks, have fun. Take it easy. See you in a bit. Bye. Uh, I've got the pin, lads. I got it. Oh, take that, world. Who's the fucking hero now? Oh, oh crap. Oh. oh, fuck you. You're breaking up, dude. That was terrible. <laughs> Just give me one more fuck you, Ziggy. Come on. Come on, mate. Fuck you, Ziggy. Yeah, that's what we want. Yeah. Right, okay. So, <laughs> Slash, <laughs> welcome back, Pete. <laughs> uh, uh, a little rusty, fuck man, you, Ziggy. As well. A little rusty. <laughs> All right, so um, you have you are falling through the air. Uh, wind is hurtling past you. Your little tiny cute cape, cute cape. Your little cute cape is fluttering in the wind. And for a split second, yeah. you imagine what it's like to be a bird, being a soaring aloft on the winds of chance. Until you realise you're not. You're a tiny little fucking halfling who's flying through the air off the side of a fucking mountain in a valley, of some godforsaken valley that you've decided to all run through. Uh, and are now being chased by six road wardens and you are falling uh, out on the wrong side uh, of a mountain road uh, pass. Um, the last thing you see is sort of like Ziggy smiling, laughing, clapping, you think, as you disappear <laughs> off the edge, hurtling over on a parabolic arc, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, straight down into a dark chasm as the light recedes and all you see is shadow waiting to greet you. Um, you get a free action, sir. So is there anything you wish to do? <laughs> Flap my wings? Mm. No. Cool, you can do that. You don't need to make a test. I think it's an automatic aesthetic thing. Uh, you start flapping <laughs> like parachutes. crazy. You grab your cloak mm. to the side and start flapping like a little hummingbird uh, to no avail. Um, can you please roll an initiative test, sir? And what is your initiative? Remind yeah. us all. Uh, it is 73. Oh, we haven't got it all written down anymore. We, not oh, anymore. This is, a new you thing. Had this is a new thing, sir. Initiative. So, this is Teddy with an initiative of 73. Okay, cool. Hit it. Roll the dice. That was on a roll. I know. Ninety-four. That's a massive failure. <laughs> Welcome back. That's, that's, that's a start, isn't Welcome it? Yes. back. You're a vagabond. Welcome back to the vagabond. Vagabond edition. All right. To be, honest, to be honest with you, even if you passed, it wouldn't have done. You'd have to get a critical success, which would have really fucked my story. So actually, it's fine. Uh, so you realise that you start fluttering your cloak, and actually, what happens is. All you end up doing is wrapping the cloak around your face. So now you're falling and you can't even see where you're going. And you finally like just like smash in a, in a kind of mad panic, like pry open the cloth from around your face and eyes. Uh, and all the first thing you see is this like massive like, like green bush hurtling towards you at the same speed that you're falling. And you slam straight into it and uh, everything goes black and you completely lose all, all, all sort of consciousness. Um, your dreams I didn't, I didn't are... even have a chance to scream out to all the Not gods even of chance, chaos that I wanted to Not even a chance. save me. You didn't even have a chance to see your pathetic little life flash before your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> all those gems just thrown away. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, so uh, you black out. Your dreams come in fitful uh, nightmares. You think actually you've descended to the dark, dark levels of halfling hell. Uh, and you've seen all the people that you've wronged and all the bad things you did, all the lies you've... you've Woven. I didn't wrong anyone. Well, from a certain point it. of view, I guess you haven't wronged anybody. But <laughs> exactly. A, the tiny, tiny... <laughs> at some, the tiny, at some, at some tiny point, tiny. he's all our faces from whenever he's just climbed up <laughs> on a roof and hidden there. Yeah, yeah. Fair point. You know, all of our, like, shock little faces as we're like, oh, Teddy isn't going to help us fight. He's He's gone. Up I was roof. helping. You just didn't notice. 
Yeah, no, that's definitely something you see as it flashes before your eyes. <laughs> like our, our disappointed, gormless faces. Disappointed, gormless faces. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you've, you, the, you you sort of like this had this weird, bizarre, nightmarish dream where your morals got su super askewed. Um, and suddenly you come to and you have you have this weird sensation of something bonking on your head, like little like pebbles almost like just clinking, clink, clink, clink against your skull. And it actually kind of hurts. But it's like, it's not oh. damaging, it's just painful. Ranald's hairy cock, what the fuck is that? Okay, you wake up and you sort of turn around and you suddenly get this mouthful of leaves and like this scratching on your face and you sort of get this feeling of being held, but like fragile, in a fragile way. Like you're being supported, but it's not, hang on Tom, hang on a second. You're being supported, but you're not being supported in any meaningful, safe way. This doesn't feel like you're in a bed or it feels like you're being held up by rope. It feels very much like if you move too much, you're just gonna, you're just gonna fall through whatever's holding you up. Sorry, Tom. Uh, I just wanted to know whose hairy cock he was. Rattles. <laughs> Rattles, <laughs> Rattles hairy cock. cock. <laughs> the god of, god of luck. Can't you, you read Warhammer? Do you like live and breathe Warhammer in between, Tom, <sighs> sessions? No. Okay. no I didn't know that there are any gods with hairy cocks. Well, it's speculative. <laughs> we don't know if that's a thing. We're just assuming that it might be. Anyway, you know, I was going to say, I thought I missed that paragraph. Okay, um. <laughs> so, so can, we, can we hurtle our way back into the story, please? All right, so back here, so, 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 so Teddy, uh, what are you going to do, sir? What, what's your first things? You're cold, uh, you're conscious? very cold. You're very, very cold. Yeah, you're conscious, you can feel your body. Your body is kind of intact, which is a miracle in itself. Um, you uh. haven't splattered against whatever, like, godforsaken, like, hole that you thought you were falling into. Um, and you're covered, in, you feel like you're covered in scratches. Your face is scratched to shit. Um, you've got twigs in your mouth, you've got leaves in your, uh, in your eyes. And, you're, and, and the you're twigs up my bum, right? Not quite, actually. More kind of like on the front of your body as opposed to the back. But sure, what, if it makes you feel better, yeah, why not? Well, didn't, well, that, that was a ratty thing, wasn't it, having twigs up his bum? Um, let's just stick with the matter of hand. You're, in a, you're clearly in some kind of tree. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I'll slowly open my eyes and try and figure out what's, 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 what, what's, okay. how am I like, how am I, what the, where, who, what is going on? Okay, so you sort of like, you move around. Uh, make an initiative test, please. Uh, I'm going to roll dice again, I'm yep. Yeah. Uh, that's not a dice roll. There you go. Uh, Come on. I don't, I don't even know what happened there. Neil the will only accept rolls over oh, 90. Good. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that is a critical <laughs> success. That is zero two. Okay, you Ooh. sort of like immediately come to your senses. You suddenly were, you sort of realize looking around, you've got night vision as well. You realize what's happened, that you fell off, you were flung off this chasm. Uh, by this, uh, by the, you remember everything. You're, the wagon that you were going, being chased by six road wardens, you tried to throw a barrel at them to stop them, they bounced over, and yeah, the, yeah. the wagon crashed when you took out the pin and didn't manage to grab uh, Ziggy's, ha uh, sorry, Ratty's hand in time. And so it hit a rock, uh, it smashed into the road, and you were flung off. Uh, and obviously you've been caught, thank somehow you've been caught through fate into an overhanging tree, which must have been like, you know, is, is growing out of the rock structure. Uh, in the chasm. Uh, you sort of flip over very cautiously but quite carefully and you lie lying on your back on this sort of like branches, uh, these, these branches that are intertwined holding your weight and you look up and you can see that about 50 feet above you is, um, is the roadside. Um, there's also a wheel hanging over a bit further up and you can see where the wagon is pretty damaged. You think you see what, also because you, you passed your thing so well, you also see what looks like horses hooves like a couple of horses who's high on the side, there is a body sort of like half dragging over and actually as you watch it, this body of a human uh, just sort of like, just slides off and pitches over and just falls like pinwheeling down into the chasm. Uh, you don't even hear a sound, it just drops. Um, uh, you also then look up and you see two figures uh, standing over the roadside and both of them have what seem to be in their hands, you've got pretty good vision because you passed that roll, so well, uh, mm -hmm. pebbles, and then I'm just throwing at them. One of them laughs, and uh, making it, make it. You actually you don't need to make a test because you asked it. You recognise the laugh. It's a, a female elf, and it's a laugh that you haven't heard for a good four years. But it sends a, a quite a worrying chill up your tiny little spine. Oh no! It can't be. No, not here. Not now. Anyone but her. Teddy. Teddy weeps no. past you. She starts laughing. <laughs> well, 
This is familiar. You also remember the last time you saw Val, uh, of Val's villains, your old uh, criminal compadre. Uh, she was actually standing over you and you were being um, swept out uh, into a sewer, a sewer duct. Um, with this, uh, she basically betrayed you and you're being swept out into a sewer duct um, along with the sewer tide and she was sort of waving goodbye to you holding a bag of cash that you both stole it together. Oh, no, 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 anyone but you. Would Carl you like to come Rattles. up, little man? Would you like to come <laughs> up, little man? <laughs> I'm just if I'm going up or down right now, which okay. is the safest option. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> okay, so she's, she repeats again. Would you like to come up, little man? No. How much is it going to cost me? Well, it's not going to... And she starts laughing again. She goes, oh, don't be silly. We're old friends. It won't cost you anything. But, um... And she does this thing, which is quite cute when you don't know her and quite chilling when you do. She sort of bites her, like, middle finger and just looks up and sort of, like, pretends as if, like, the thought is coming to her head. And she goes, well, there is something you could do for us. Uh, a favour. Uh, oh. <laughs> Die horribly, face first, under the ground, or do a favour for Val. <laughs> oh, I, uh, okay, I mean, you know I mean, I just can't say no to you. All right, she goes, thought not, and then she sort of talks to this, there's a very handsome man next to her, who's wearing this very fine clothes, and he's very beautiful as well for human, I mean, you begrudgingly admit he's very beautiful, but he's quite stunning. And he's sort of, he's also got this very fluid flow movement to his body. So he turns to you, he's almost like he's like dancing. And he turns back to, he shares a laugh with her. And he's carrying something, which is rope. Uh, you don't know who this person is. Um, however, it is being played by Tom. Tom, uh, Val turns to you and says, go on then, darling, throw the little man some aid. And she wanders off to the cart and starts jumping over the wagon. I sort of shout after her, really? Must I? <laughs> Yes, darling, she turns around and goes, you must. And then trips it. You can see her starting to loot one of the bodies. Come on then, you posh twat. Get it down here. <laughs> You'd better be useful. <laughs> Clem, your character is currently looking at some tracks and, uh, and surveying some of the dead bodies. You're also looting some of the saddle wagon, uh, saddlebags. Uh, you come across one person, uh, the road warden, uh, who still is sort of stirring. He's very badly injured. Um, but he looks like he's um, he's sort of not dead yet, even though he's crushed quite horribly by the lo uh, the the legs. I can't turn him over. Fuck it. By the legs of the horse. Uh, what do you want to do, Clem? Hey, Val. Val, we've got problem. Val comes over and goes, "What is it?" <laughs> sort of like saunters over to you. He's alive. Want hey. me not make him alive? She takes off her, her rather nice kind of black expensive top hat, turns it to the, her head to the side, and goes, "Is he?" Alive? He doesn't look very alive to me. And she starts whistling and then wanders back over to where um, to where the other gentleman is unfurling the rope. Well, dear, guess it sucks to be you. Or I axe him. <laughs> or just you, axe him or dagger him. Come on, let's, let's have some dignity here, sir. <laughs> axe him. <laughs> him. <laughs> I think a, a, knife, a neck cut would be sufficient, sir. I don't know if you have to axe him. <laughs> I, I'm liking that brutality. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm liking the brutality. Can All you right. let God please let me ax him? All right, you can ax him. It's your character, I guess. All right. There's the other guy walks past you, who's basically just laden with weapons, and you just watch as you you raise the axe above this poor like road warden's head, who's like trying to. No, oh, no, please! Don't. I have a wife and ten, five, seven children. Obviously making it up. And it's guy not my problem. The other guy walks past and goes, "Here, son, don't you think it's a bit of an overkill?" The irony of him saying that, he's bristling with weapons um, as he says that, Parsi. He did his did. He shrugs and carries on walking, goes, Hey Val, we probably should make a move on, you know. Time's getting on. Val goes, yes, yes, darling. Now come on then, little man, grab the rope and let's get going. Lovely to see you down there. I mean, to see you again. <laughs> Is, is, the, is the rope there? Yeah, the rope's been pulled down and uh, the gentleman at the top is sort of tied it off. He's not holding it. He's tied it off onto something and he gives it a few tugs. You can give it a few tugs, sorry. 
uh, if you want. Yeah, well, I'm I'm going to clamber up with yeah. using Scotia Surface as well, just to sort of... Yeah, I mean, you're pretty nimble. Scotia Surface means you won't have to make any rolls, you can use the rope as assistance, and you can get up pretty easily from that. Yeah, yeah, so... even with the bump on my noggin i'm guessing yeah even with a bump on your noggin uh so can you manage to get up to the side uh he doesn't he sort of looks you look like you you know you're offering the hand for somebody to help you he just steps back and just looks at you and sits and he hops up onto the side of this wagon which is um ever so slightly off the edge but it's still pretty secure so it's not going to fall anytime soon val standing there with her arms crossed just looking at you she's got an apple she's got an apple in her hand she's rubbing it against the, her at the top of her um shirt and he's just like munching on it and just looking at you with this, with that smile that you know so well. Uh, there's another gentleman over here who's just bristling with weapons and looks incredibly fucking dangerous. He's also the biggest out of all of them. Um, he's just sort of, he's a shaved head, he's got a gold ring and a gold and gold teeth. And when he smiles, it's like, it just looks like a shark smiling at you. You know what a shark is, but if you knew what a shark was, <laughs> it'd be like one of those, it's like a shark smiling at you. And there's another gentleman who's covered in fur. And, but not like huge amounts of fur, just like fur clothing and leather. And he's got a couple of axes on his back and uh, this kind of weird looking crossbow, which is slung down low on like a hip holster on the side. And he's just cut, he's just axed this guy. He just, oh, as he axed one of the road wardens. Um, and then just stands up and wipes his blade on, on the road warden's clothes and just carries on rifling through the pockets and gives you a furtive look, but that's about it. Um, so- Keep it up on subtlety then, Val, hey? What's this all about? She munches, yes. going, she munches and goes, yes. it is good to see you, Teddy. What yes. chance is it that we should run into each other here? And I need something. I do wonder. And I you do need wonder. something. Looks like you had a precarious fall. Where are those, um, what do you call yourselves again? Or other people call you? Those vagabonds. Vagabonds. <laughs> yeah. I'm not telling you shit, woman. Well, okay. <laughs> she looks around. Uh, the kids of light just nods towards uh, Val and goes, Dead way, and just oh, it's clearly there's only one way they went, so it's like you, I'm not going to tell you shit. It's like, well, they went over there, there's only one way in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you can't tell that for yourself, what's wrong with you? I'm not a rat, <laughs> said Teddy. <laughs> I'm the rat, okay. That goes, okay. Well, listen, this has been as pleasant as it is to catch up. We're oh, on a Diggy, bit of a Diggy went, Diggy went that way, you could tag him if you want, uh, right? As, as pleasant as it is, um, to catch up, um, <laughs> sorry, it's like, um. As pleasant it is to uh, catch up, um, I, we are in a bit of a time limit, um, and so could you, if you wouldn't mind so so gratefully, come with us, get your belongings, and just get a move on. Uh, our horses are down there. You can ride with Knuckles. Knuckles is this guy over here with massive amounts of weapons and armors who just like sort of goes <laughs> like that and just like, and this and by this. my halfling honour, I owe you for getting me up here, but. Oh God! If it was anyone else. Cool, Clem. What do you want to do? Okay. Um, how much cash is on the um, is on the guard? Uh, uh, there's enough. You find a, you find a couple of purses. You got to put okay. down two. Um, uh, put down two purses that you sort of cut, and you get a couple of, like shitty weapons. They got some crossbow bolts, which will fit your crossbows. You can take up nice those one. things, which is pretty good. And they got some money and some like useless like memorabilia, like. You know, uh, uh, one of those things called um, a keepsake. Like a box. Oh, oh. No, nothing, yeah. nothing that interesting. Yeah, the the guy, the guy just put a uh, an, an axe handle through the head of. Whoops. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Right. No problem. Yeah. You I'll, see I'll, his, I'll his two there. children and his like the church he built from scratch by his bare hands and put. It was, you see all that stuff in the background of the picture. Yeah, um, but I'm playing an asshole. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Uh, okay. So you, you carry on looting and just finishing up and just like tucking these purses away. Uh, Tom, what do you want to do, sir? So I, I jump up uh, next to Teddy yep. and sort of sit by him and kind of give him a little sort of jaunty smile and a wave. And I sort of go, Val, dear, are we sure that he's useful? Yes, darling. He's one of the best locksmiths I've ever, I've ever met. Um, not locksmiths, what do you call it? Yeah, he's one of the lock breakers I've ever met. Plus, he's expendable. <laughs> she laughs. Um, so I go, I go, OK, then. And at that point, I sort of tap Teddy on the shoulder and point out, is that a canary over there? <laughs> Pete, what are you going to do? A what? <laughs> you turn a canary? to look. You turn to look. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> at that point, I um, take something. I've, taken, I've got something concealed in my hand. Yeah. I blow a fine powder into his <laughs> face as he turns to look. Nice. <laughs> um, All right. 
a sort of purplish powder, which will have a certain effect on him. Cool. So, uh, Teddy, can you please make a toughness test minus 10, please? So your toughness times 10, minus 10. Please. Yeah. Oh, no. That's a big whopping fail. Okay, so you just get hit. You see this, like you, can, you don't see a canary. So you sort of turn back and go, there's no fucking canary. <laughs> and at that moment, this, this dust is just straight in your face. It's all like this purplish dust that just filters in your face. You start coughing. It tastes very much like strawberries and sherbet. And as you, mm. you think you say that out loud, and as you do so, you just you go mm, and just then you just slam forward onto your face, and again oh, the world goes just twice in ten minutes, amazing. <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> and again the world just goes dark. Um, cool. You come to, uh, and you're on the back of a wagon again, which you can't tell what reality you're in. Whether this was that was all a dream, whether this is a dream, the whole thing is really surreal. Uh, and you realize after waking up, you, your hands and legs are bound. Uh, you have a sack over your head, but it's like a really thin burlap sack, which you can kind of see through. Um, and you're in this sort of like covered, this coach. And the coach is going through what looks like a city. Um, and either side of you, you can see um, like these houses and uh, like little bits of greenery. So it looks like quite a civilized place. And you kind of feel like you're in a cul-de-sac. Um, because right at the end, you sort of turn your head ever so slightly, so that the you know the, the, the gentleman looking after you uh, don't see, and you saw this big red uh, farm, this big red townhouse uh, with a huge, massive opening, which is like a like a coach stable opening, but it's in the front of the building, and um, the two guys are here and here just hop out. Um, and they go to the front and they open these these two massive wagon sized doors, and the whole thing just goes straight inside, um, and then the doors are slammed shut. Um, Tom, what are you going to do, sir? You're inside uh, your, your you're inside this place, um, which I made reference to um, in the document I sent you. Um, I, so I, I jump down and I hold out my hand to Teddy and say, "No, no harm intended, old thing." Okay, dude. And try to help him down. All right, so you, uh, this gentleman says that and takes off the burlap sack to your head and you see that you're in a dimly lit, uh, what looks like a massive kind of like storeroom stroke barn, uh, but there are sort of beds everywhere and there are like, there's boxes everywhere and it looks, and there's a, like a mezzanine level, kind of like a stables, um, but it's been converted. There's like, you see what you think is like a forge almost in the corner here. And there's lots of like equipment and bits and pieces, like there's loads of stuff around. Uh, this guy Knuckles that you heard goes over to um, the big doors and just you see this enormous massive um, uh, What do you call it like when you, you, you lock something with a I can't remember what it's called now my brain's come dead um, You know when you bolt a door like a massive bolt basically and he bolts the double doors and so you can possibly break them down unless you have a battering ram um, They start going about their business. So you're helped down by uh, this gentleman Who's uh, very finely spoken and this other guy here the kids levy at um, accent guy He's just staring at you. <coughs> Excuse me. He's just staring at you, and he's sort of like got a little, a little uh, knife, his little axe out, and he's just picking his nails. And Val's wandering off and is now like talking to um, the other guy, Knuckles, who's like they're just talking about something you can't quite focus on because your head's splitting. What do they call you then? <coughs> to the to the Kislevite. To the Kislevite. They call me Trekker. How did you get so short? <laughs> <laughs> Who called you tracking your mum? Bit of a crap name, isn't it? You see what I did to the guard? Put you in two. Oh, short, ah. short person like you, a little boy like you ought to watch their mouths. I yes. wouldn't like that, would she? No, she wouldn't. What's she got over you then, hey? Eh? What's she got on you? Tom, what do you want to do, sir? <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> I believe we have a job to attend to, so, um... Unless you are going to split each other in two, I suggest we get on with it. This one's for you there, Tracker. Yeah. <laughs> You're you just <laughs> an out keeping watch I'm, anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm all pissing vinegar right now. I'm yeah. scared shitless. I, I gotta say, your, your threats are, are really as bad as they were beforehand. <laughs> so, <laughs> hasn't, that hasn't changed in like six months or whatever. Okay, so uh, tra Tracker steps forward and sort of like roughly pushes you in this direction. They, they cut your bonds enough, but your hands are still tied. 
Um, and um, this guy here, who still hasn't introduced himself, uh, sort of walks around, sees Val, and they start talking in low whispers. You see Knuckles, who's like getting something out, he's rolling some bits and pieces like parchment out, and you'll get sort of like, not pushed, but like sort of nudged towards this table over here. Val uh, and this other gentleman uh, join you over here. The gentleman goes over to this sort of like vanity table. Um, it's kind of like one of those, like, it's like a dressing, dressing room table, you know, for like stage and theater. And it has these little kind of candles everywhere and there's like mirrors and stuff. And then you've got those hair pieces and stuff. He goes over to it and starts opening and fiddling around with bits and pieces. Uh, Val walks over. Nobody pays him any mind by doing so. Um, you come up and you see in front of you this very large table, uh, which has a whole bunch of maps on it. And there are diagrams and there are information. Do you read and write, by the way? No. Right. So you have no idea what it is, but it looks really weirdly organized. And there's a map in the center. Please make an intelligence test. Not famed for my brains. Oh, no, fell by two. Fell by two. Do you, you don't have luck or anything, do you? No. Thank God. All right, so um, <laughs> you, have, you can't really tell what it is, but it definitely looks like a map of a building. What kind of building, you have no idea. But you, it definitely is a building of some kind. It's like building schematics, basically. Um, cool. Okay. So Val sort of uh, wanders over and goes, Teddy, we're so glad you could join us. Now, about that favour you owe us for saving your life. What's the scheme this time, Val? And how does it involve me covered in shit again? She laughs and looks towards this gentleman over here and just goes, private joke. And she goes, well, <laughs> so my chums and I decided that we'd like to retire. Um, you know, it's been a long old haul, and quite frankly, most of us have, well, we put in our work and we feel it's about time that we retire to pastures greener and possibly less dangerous than the ones we're currently in. So, we've decided to crash a party. And, um, would anybody else like to chip in at this point? Um, <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> No. Uh, carry on. Uh, very well. <laughs> very well. I could, I could give it a go, though. Okay, very well. So, here is... Oh, by the way, I should probably tell you where you are. You're in the wonderful city of Grunier. Uh, sorry, Grunier was the city that you passed through at the base of... Fruit yeah. Zone. So, actually, weirdly, you haven't actually come... You've probably come, like, half a day's journey uh, back the way that you came. So, on one level, that's good news. Uh, on the other level, um, uh, you know, <laughs> on the other on the other hand, it's um, uh, it's not the direction I wanted to be going. Exactly, yes. and it's definitely not the direction that uh, the vagabonds are in. Um, she carries <laughs> on, and and the other the other guys like chip in. Um, she, uh, firstly, she goes before I start. I should probably introduce you to the new Val's villains. On my left over here is our face man, the Visard. And he points towards uh, Tom's character. And give a little... The, the visage. Right. Okay. Sorry, what was that Tom in here, mate? Uh, I give a little two-fingered salute, and I say to him, <laughs> I say to Teddy, my friends call me the Viz, but you can call me the Vizard. <laughs> okay. He sort of does a little flourish. He goes, and over there, we have, well, affectionately known as our muscle, uh, Knuckles. And Knuckles sort of stands up. He's got a very thick Null Knight accent, which you recognise, because obviously most of your life was spent in Null, um, mm. after you left the moot. And he just goes, all right, mate, uh, and just cracks his neck left, and then cracks it right, and then just sits back down again. The, fuck, the guy's enormous. He's like about six foot three. And probably about like five foot wide. He's like, he's just, this is just basically pure muscle bristling with weapons. Um, he doesn't really, he just stares at you. One of those like uncomfortable stares where you don't think he's, you don't remember him ever blinking, which is he's the, he's the brains of this outfit, isn't he? I can see that. You get nudged in the back by the Kislevite who then speaks. <laughs> you talk a lot, lot for a little man. <laughs> like I said, I'm, the, I'm, as we've introduced ourselves before, I'm the trekker. We need to make sure that no one creeps up on us. And, you're, and, you're, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 I was just, um, I, I, I lost it. All okay. good. And so Valsk goes, and of course, we know each other rather well. So, here's where, the... Where the old villains go, hey, Val? <laughs> what do you do with them? Okay. Um, hey. <laughs> okay. She ignores she, you. your old gang? She ignores you and just oh, carries oh. on. She takes out a long <laughs> stick. Can you move your hand there, sir? 
quickly. Thank you. She takes out a little stick and starts pointing towards the map. And she goes, this is Castle Grenier. Castle Grenier is, a, um, is an impenetrable fortress and is surrounded by this rather large gate over here. The gate, of course, as you all know, if you remember from your visit in Grenier, is led by a long, uh, narrow uh, main road that enters into up a very long slope, about 60 feet tall, uh, which has got a rather sharp incline. Everything goes through this gate uh, here and into the main courtyard, and the main fort is, pre is uh, presented in the centre of, um, of the castle grounds there. We are going to enter the castle, and we are going to go to the vault, and we are going to take all of the gems that are currently on, being put on display in the museum area of the uh, treasure vault. We are very fond of gems. <laughs> And when you say we, Val, you mean... I mean you. <laughs> She's, she whacks you with the stick. Ow, in our baskets. So she goes on to explain that this uh, vault here, which is usually filled with, you know, your regular money, all that kind of stuff, uh, which would probably be a king's random ransom by itself, is going to be housing some very special things. Uh, this particular um, castle, which is owned by uh, the local count um, of Grenier, uh, which is still kind of border prince's territory, sort of. So it's a bit like it's kind of under the empire, but kind of autonomous. Um, he, this count here is creating his own museum, and he wants to put all these kind of amazing, fabulous curios in it on display, so that rich people, when they come here, well, it's a kind of like a social status thing, right? They'll come there and they'll inspect all the nice, wonderful gems he's got and all these amazing artifacts and items, and then you know he wines and dines them basically. But it's just, just basically a social standing thing. However, she goes on to say that this vault over here, which she goes into macro detail, this vault is, um, sorry, can you move your hand there, Klim? You're right over where yes. Thank you very much. So the vault sits inside a, a strong room, and the strong room is accessible from only one double door. There are guards posted all around the strong room, <coughs> day and night on a 24 hour watch, <coughs> and in the center here, is this kind of room within a room. To keep the humidity, because there are paintings inside, however, there is an access tunnel, or like a, an access funnel, sorry, which goes from almost the center of the room, straight up through the castle grounds to the roof. And the roof itself is about 80 feet or 90, maybe 100 feet tall. And the only way to climb it and get access to it is to climb the actual castle walls itself and get to the top. The reconnaissance of that, they don't know. They don't know what's on top of the, um, the castle. But if this is the castle here with the main gate here, um, this essentially this, pat, this shaft goes the whole way down through the center. So we do it like on the side there, like this. It goes all the way straight through the center down into this room to keep humidity. There is apparently a grate at the top here to stop rain and a grate at the top there. Um, and also there is only one massive huge vault door here. Your job, is to get inside the castle grounds during a banquet for the first unveiling of this kind of like mini museum. Um, then, this is only the strong area. The museum itself is actually going to, is sort of like, is next to it. But the gems haven't been moved yet. They're about to be moved this evening so that people can f see, the, see the exhibition. There's a, a dinner, a dance and a ball um, uh, being put on for the unveiling of this sort of museum things. But at the moment, um, all of the gemstones and all the riches and items they want is in this vault. Uh, because there is something that, that you found out, or she found out, sorry, that nobody else knows, the museum is going to be filled with fakes. So even though the museum opening is tonight, um, the gemstones are actually all fake. The real ones are in the vault here. So whilst people are being shown around this museum on the same floor and, all the, and ooing and ahhing over this stuff, none of it's real. It's all forgery, it's all crap. The reason she knows that is because actually she knows one of the forgers that made it, that gave her the tip off in the first place. So your job is to somehow get into the grounds, scale the castle, get to the roof, drop down this, the same kind of like funnel, get into the room, somehow get out of the vault by opening it from the inside, somehow taking care of these six guards, opening up these double doors, so the rest of the gang can come in and help take away all the gems, then escape up the same funnel that you came down, climb down the castle, and somehow escape 
uh, with a distraction or something to be able to uh, make your way out without being captured. She stops her explanation, which is quite general like that, and just puts down the stick, which is like this telescopic stick that she just goes like that and closes. And then she stops and just turns to you and looks. Easy, isn't it? I see problem. I see several big problems. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Who's your inside man, Val? Well, that would be me. Uh, <laughs> I'm not inside yet, as you can tell. I'm right here. But, um, yes, I, I specialize in infiltration, shall we say. Oh, so you're doing all this work. Oh, excellent. I'm just staying here and counting the money, right? No, no. You're coming with us. We need you to unlock doors. <sighs> Crap. Right, okay then. So, when's all this shenanigans taking place? Tomorrow night, she says, and just starts opening like Tomorrow a, night? She opens a little like in a bottle and starts pouring herself a little like um sip of what looks smells like brandy or something like that and into one glass, then into another glass and hands it to With these clowns. The we're gonna do this tomorrow night with these clowns. She sort of looks at you and goes, just so, and then just takes a sip of this drink and cheers to uh, the visard, the viz, who's also got a glass in his hand now. What's Knuckles going to do? He's going to get stuck at the top of the bloody chute, isn't he? He looks at you and goes, don't be fucking daft, I'm your way in and out, son. I'm there in case things go tits up. And he just starts polishing. You are the tits up, son. He stands up very quickly. <laughs> and you suddenly take into account that he is literally twice your height. And he sort of like moves to the table, but doesn't Knuckles, like to... Knuckles, <laughs> Knuckles. Knuckles. Yes. I know he's, sh he's short, we know. But he open locks. You need to keep his hands on his body. Just the ends. What about his legs? <laughs> he just like looks at Teddy. Legs not so sure. I'm more worried about the one way in, one way out. That's what worries me. Val steps forward again and goes, I've told you this. There is only one way in and out. That's why we have him. And just points very lazily towards <laughs> Teddy. Your job is to get him up that castle wall. His job, pointing at Vassard, is to go inside and cause the distractions. And his job, pointing at, and his job, pointing at Knuckles, is to make sure that if something goes wrong, it doesn't go wrong for us. And Knuckles, with that, sort of like growls a little bit and just sits back and steps back. Got it? Yet. <laughs> she goes, I'm assuming that's a yes. <laughs> it's yes, it's yes. <laughs> right. Might I remind you, Tracker, that you owe me, as you all owe me. And P uh, Teddy, you, you realize that all of these guys seem to have, well, they seem to like, oh, of course. owing Val is never a good thing. So um, no. everybody goes quite quiet and is quite charger and she's clearly the dominant in the room. Uh, Val, Val sort of goes over, rolls up a few maps and then takes another piece of parchment out and goes, what do you make of this? And puts it down in front of you, Pete. Please make an intelligence test plus 20, please. Oh, uh, oh, what's going on? There. Dice. There. Roll. Oh, as wrong as I could possibly be. <laughs> That's a critical fail. That's the worst roll ever. That's a hundred. Mm. That's a critical fail. Okay. Wow. All right. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not coming back. Oh my god. I cut myself to death with I, paper. I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> yeah, how do I do that? All right. So you look at it and you're convinced it's a steam. It's like the plans for a steam engine. Like you're convinced. <laughs> like it's a steam engine that um, also makes coffee or something. I can't, I can't believe I bonded that role. Yeah, you totally bonded that role. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. so What's this got to do with the price of fish? You have absolutely no idea what the fuck this thing that she's handed you to. She goes, and she's just, everybody's just staring at you. And, and just staring at you. And Val's going, what do you mean? You, what do you mean? What is I'm this? I'm just going to turn it upside down. And you, go, <laughs> <laughs> you, ex you expect me to make this? There is this huge I think got, silence. I think got the wrong vagabond. There's this huge silence. And then Val just goes, okay. And just goes, over here. Over here, villains. <laughs> and one by one, all of the guys just step over into this corner next to the, the, the vanity table. Uh, uh, apart from Knuckles, who's sort of like staying there and has now got a crossbow out and is just like lazily pointing in your direction, Pete. Vil, uh, Vil, 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 you sure he did not hit his head quite hard on the way down the hill? <laughs> yeah. 
Tom, feel free to speak out. We're just having a little huddling moment, which Teddy can hear. Just, I just need to point out, out of game, I just need to point out that Teddy was probably the smartest of the vagabonds. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, we <laughs> filling us up here. Uh, uh, <laughs> what do you want to say in character, Tom? <laughs> no, that, that's, that's not damning with faint praise, though, isn't it, really? Well... Well, he's trying to figure it out. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> yes. uh, oh, for God's sake, you and your bloody beauty rest. Now, listen, <laughs> I, I, do you? Uh, this is a bit of a problem. He doesn't even know what that is. Or, or maybe he's just faking it. She stops, turns and goes, Are you faking it, Teddy? <laughs> yeah, I got you there, didn't I? Thought, of course, <laughs> I'm faking it. Okay. Yeah, good. don't worry. Leave this with me, and you go get your beauty sleep, guys. So I'll, you I'll... know, you know exactly what that is and how to work it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I basically built this. <laughs> she looks at you, sort of like blinks, and goes, "And you, you don't. There's nothing you need to take with you to do that." Oh uh, well. You know, as I said, I basically built these things. I'm, 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 I'm I've got it inside out, she, upside down, left to right. She chews no her lip. Here, no. She chews her lip and just gives you this wistful thought and goes, "Okay, I'm going to choose to believe you." <laughs> Knuckles, will you help Teddy to his um, <clears throat> quarters? Uh, Knuckle, Knuckles and goes about bloody about bloody time. And just steps around, grabs you by the neck, and just hoiks you over into this sort kind of like a converted pigsty. With a with a lid on it, and just slams you down into this like the straw kind of like thing, and then just pulls this yeah. massive this massive like kind of like a I don't know what you call it really actually, but it's like it's kind of like it's like a wooden um, lid with, with with like open with you know things like this, and just closes it and then just locks you into this little kind of like weird cage, um, and he just puts his hand through the um, uh, through the the gaps in between the wooden slats and just taps you on the head and goes night night don't let the uh bait bugs bite <laughs> and he just starts walking off i mean it would have been funnier if you'd said pigs knuckles old boy but um you know <laughs> that bugs the second where uh, <laughs> i would have gone second uh, <laughs> oh knock it off this <laughs> val says as she walks past now come to bed so am I taking first watch, or are we not doing that anymore? Um, Knuckles goes, yeah, of course you're bloody taking first watch. Fucking hell, every time. <laughs> he just walks around, just like, he gets into his sort of like bedding area and just lies down, with, uh, opens a bottle. You this, boom, this bottle gets opened. Uh, you notice the Val and the Viz walk off, and you think that as Viz starts walking up, they're kind of up on this mezzanine area, but you're pretty sure that as the Viz like kind of like hops on the ladder and pops up, you're pretty sure that you see through, even though you're through, you know looking through the, the gaps of this wooden bench. You're pretty sure that um, uh, Val gives his bottom a pinch. Gross. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. So, uh, what are you going to do, Teddy? Um, try and have so another go. Do check your WhatsApp from time to time as well, because I might be sending you a Oh, sorry, my it's on charge. Oh. Um, I'll get it. That's an obvious subtle hint to go and look at it. Yeah, yeah, no, just I'll, I'll be sending you messages periodically. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so uh, taking the subtle hint and try and uh, figure it through. All right, cool. So uh, is anybody doing anything else that I should know about? Well, I'm doing Val. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Clearly, you are. All right, so you two have your phone. Okay, so Teddy. You don't really get a good night's rest. You're sort of you're in a fucked situation. Um, Every now and again, like on when the watch changes over, Knuckles is like starts tormenting you a little bit and throws like pieces of like I don't know, piece of carrot and stuff, starts calling you piggy and like uh, doing stuff like that. And every now and again you hear this giggle. Although weirdly you don't hear Val giggle, it's more the giggle you, you just hear like the Viz giggle quite a lot <laughs> every now and again. <laughs> Give us a giggle, Tom. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> 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 they sound like they're tickling each other. Okay, so yeah, uh, that sort of like also oh, is quite I'm haunting. Very ticklish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Viz is very ticklish. The Viz also talks about himself in the third person sometimes. Uh, reminds you of Bondo. And with that thought, your mind just drifts to the vagabonds. And I guess. Of course, 17 year old halfling thinking of. 
the times he had with the Val. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, it goes, it, your mind drifts to the vagabonds and where they are and why they haven't come and why they didn't come back for you and all that kind of stuff floats around your head and you sort of get, you, you end up sort of falling asleep through sheer exhaustion but it's not a good sleep you, you have a you're in a d bit of a bit of a rum situation mate um and you, things don't look great for our boy uh teddy uh, <coughs> anything else that you want to do teddy i was to say is there any, any more sort of i can discern from that sheet of paper that she gave me or is it just uh, you can't see it. I mean, you're locked in this kind of like cage thing. Um, oh, I thought she gave it to me. Sorry. No, she. Oh, that no, she left it on the table. Oh, actually, no, no. You know what? Fair enough. Yeah, she did give it to you. Um, yeah, you you stare at it halfway through the night. You manage to shake these thoughts off to try and give yourself some breathing space, and you start staring intently at this diagram. You have zero clue what the fuck this thing is, but you've just lied your way into saying you know exactly what it is that you practically <laughs> built it. Um, I mean, it's probably got something to do with your skill sets, but what the fuck it is, you have no idea. Um, uh, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, pretend to know what I'm doing or die, right? So let's not die just yet. Right, you tuck it back into your, into your belongings, into your pouches and stuff, mm. and you still try to bed down to sleep. Uh, okay, eventually you do fall asleep. Your nightmares are worse, falling dreams, um... And uh, yeah, generally, you, you know, things seem to be going bad for worse. And you wake up um, having your cage rattled uh, by the Kislevite and the very strong smell of coffee um, sort of permeates your nostrils. Um, the others are already up. Um, the Viz and also Val um, seem to be doing something over here and they're, they're working on something. You see that the Knuckles is, trying, is lifting up a couple of um, like big crates into the wagon. And uh, the horses, which were have already been sta were stabled last night, um, are being fed as well. He goes sort of doing both jobs really. The Kislevite has come over towards you, holding a mug uh, in t t you, one mug in both hands. Here's short stuff. You want the brew? <coughs> yeah, get it in me, I suppose. Let's get this day going. Um, he then moves to unlock the cage uh, and lifts up the lid uh, of your sort of wooden wooden sty. Was that was that really necessary, guys? Do you really think I was going to do a runner? You hear from yes, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> you're surrounded by people who are three times taller than you, and we're threatening you all the time. Of course, you're going to do a runner. Now get that coffee down, you. You realise that you, you think probably that this you've obviously wounded somebody's uh, pride there a little bit. This thing was probably built by this kid's levy, so you know. Might want to watch your P's and Q's there, mate. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. So, uh, team. Okay, so this is the plan. The plan is that today you are going to be doing the assault. Um, the Val comes back over and you go through the uh, plan. And the plan is, I mean, it's up to you how you feel about it, Teddy. But basically the plan is that you're going to try and go in the wagon which is now being filled with goods, which are presumably for the party. And you see that this banner is being put on the side of the wagon, which you can't read. But it, they're basically masquerading as a party, as one of the party companies that are supplying this party. They're going to pull up, um, and the Viz is going to be wandering in as a guest. Um, and Knuckles is driving this thing. And in some of the stores and in hidden compartments are all his weapons and your equipment. And you are going to be placed inside barrels and various things in the middle of all these barrels. And he's going to try and smuggle you in um, inside. So that's sort of how they're going to try and do that. Um, any thoughts at all, Teddy? It wouldn't be the first time I've been in a barrel. All right, I'm up for this. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty comfortable in the barrel, so yeah. <laughs> No, let's do... What's, what's going to go wrong? So who, who else is coming in with me? Um, so they, they talk about how um, Val and um, the Kislevite are also going to be hiding. Um, so uh, they're not coming with you. They're going to be hidden in other areas. But essentially, that's the idea. You can try and smuggle your way through in this large, oversized wagon. Um, into... You know that this is this this is just going to be impossible, right? Something's going to go horribly wrong for us, guys. Um, Val looks. Well, just where we had the big man. <laughs> well, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that's why you got the big ones. Don't worry about it. If things go really badly, we'll just throw you to them. You can be a distraction. He just pats you on the head again as he past. Um, cool. Okay. Then with zero drawbacks, my friend. <laughs> exactly. And Val goes exactly. Everybody wins. Now, last before we head off, 
Um, we should make sure that our equipment is ready. So um, basically, folks, uh, can you tell me very quickly, succinctly, what it is that you need to get to get ready? Um, I would like to get hold of um, what is it? Um, do uh, do I have anything round here which could act as say about twenty calthrops? Um, you you've made you've got preparation like you've prepared for this okay. mission. So let's say right. that you can do two d six. You made two d six caltrops. Okay. Um, so why don't you roll two d six, and that's how many you made in the week or so prep that you had for this mission. Okay. Cool. Right. So. In case it wasn't clear, um, the Vizard is, uh, as in me, myself, yeah. um, is a spy. And I have a certain amount of equipment I have to take with me. I have um, some poison, non-lethal poison, because I, I don't like to kill people unless it's absolutely necessary, uh, in a vial that I have secreted on my person. I won't say where. <laughs> um, maybe I'll, I'll my in this prison pouch, nice. <laughs> um, I also have a series of small explosive packs, like little bit, like specially made little um, clip-on explosives. What are they disguised uh, as, Tom? They are sort of pouch. They look like pouches on a on a kind of um, bandolier around me. <laughs> and they literally will unclip a whole pouch will unclip you know they look like I have things in them but they, they are actually just explosive so a whole pouch will unclip mm. and uh, attach itself to, you know to wherever I want to place it oh cool nice. um, are you Warhammer Batman you got everything on your belt <laughs> <laughs> he's got the shark repellent there as well <laughs> maybe <laughs> Zote repellent <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> so yeah, they'll see me preparing that, you know, clipping these pouches yeah. onto this bandolier and then, yeah, secreting a certain vial of poison right. on me. I shan't say where. <laughs> you do hear this little... <laughs> <laughs> as he sort of secretes it. All right, cool. Uh, that's your, okay. So your equipment is, I guess, pretty much done as well as anything on your character sheet. You are going to be going on foot. Uh, you also have uh, your forged papers, your forged invite to the party. Uh, the party is by Count um, Count Flump. <laughs> I really did, I didn't think about his name, man. I didn't come up with a name. I'm looking around my room, desperately trying to find Count Octopui. Uh, Count Octopui. <laughs> There you go. Count Octopui. Um, I'm looking at a picture of an octopus. There's no, no picture of an octopus. Um, Count Uhu. <laughs> I really need a name, folks, because I'm struggling to make a name for this fucking count. Count. Um, it's hard, isn't it? Count, see? Should we just say, like, Reichart? Count Reichart. Why not? Okay, let's just go yeah, something cool. really, like, you know, inspired. So, Count Reichart is. Uh, oh, look. Just saying, Count Uhu. So. Count Uhu. <laughs> Count Uhu Reichardt <laughs> the third. Uh, his party is tonight. You forged the. You got party invites which are forged. Um, Count. No. <laughs> we're still going with the Count thing. Should we just settle on Count Reich? Whatever. <laughs> the Count. Let's just call him the Count. Um, so anyway, you've been. You've got your forged papers. You're going to make your way by foot. You'll, you'll hire a carriage, for instance, and and then either walk or, or use the carriage to go up where, as your fancy takes you. It's a nice evening. It's still summer, obviously. Uh, and Val and um, Tracker and also uh, Teddy are now safely sort of in their barrels. Um, and uh, yeah, and you sort of feel uh, as as the barrel is sort of there's a latch to the barrels on the inside. So if anybody cool. tried to open them, they'd be impossible, like they were nailed down. In actual reality, yeah. there's a whole bunch of very clever latches on the inside which are firmly holding it in place, as if somebody's trying to pull it off, for instance. And there's a yeah. bit of liquid in them as well around. It's kind of quite clever, like liquid that's been um, put uh, held in place by like this uh, wax leather tar stuff which has all been like tarred down. So if you shake the barrel, it sounds like there's liquid inside it. It's quite a clever contraption. Um, and all of the three of you are in your own barrels right in the center of all these things. Um, you sort of hear, you hear um, uh, Knuckles turn to the Viz and go, all right, Viz, you know the signal. Uh, actually, I've forgotten the signal. Remind me what the signal is when you're ready to cause a distraction. Uh, 
Tom. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry? What? What's the signal, Tom? Knuckles, What's the signal? Knuckles has turned to you, he's turned to the Viz, and said, remind me what the signal is. I sound like Gary now. Remind me what the yeah, signal yeah, is. I was going to say. Oh, remind me, right, remind me what the signal is, mate. Uh, I've forgotten the signal. Uh... Was there a signal? Yeah, there was a signal that you're going to lean out the window after you've placed the certain things in the place, and when the thing's about to like, the distraction's about to kick off, you're going to lean out a, p a particular you've window. Not, you've not made that clear to me. I know. So. I was role playing, improvising, sir. This was like off the off the well, top of my head. You don't improvise outside of the plan. <laughs> my, my, my Tom, can I suggest something? Uh, maybe a handkerchief or something which might ac accidentally get thrown out of a window, you know, and not alert people. Uh, uh, but definitely not a flaming torch. <laughs> out of my ass, and I stick my ass out of the window with the handkerchief up it. <laughs> I'm waving around. He looks, at, he looks at you and blinks and goes, Are you, really? Is that a signal? That sounds, that sounds a bit elaborate. <laughs> sounds a bit elaborate, man. Um, why don't you just throw it out the window? <laughs> and then he and then he realizes that the red handkerchief out the window is the signal, and that you're just pulling his leg. Um, with that, he sort of like laughs a little bit, and, and then just looks at you again, and she goes, "Go on in," and then just I cheers smile. up. Like, I just smile at him, go, "Yes." <laughs> okay. Uh, he kicks the wagon. You open the doors for here, for them, and the wagon gives a little lurch as the two horses draw it out, and you're off into the street again. Uh, the Viz walk is closing the doors behind their H to the hideout, and uh, the four of you set off towards the castle. Um, okay, so you are um, the the cart winds through Grenier, all of which you miss, of course, Pete, because you're in the middle of a fucking yep. barrel. Um, uh, but you do start noticing a very sharp incline, and that the horses are straining a little bit with the with the weight. And you hear knuckles every now and again, chip, 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 like that. And you hear other people and things passing by, obviously not very, with great clarity, but you can sort of hear it enough to realize that you're, you're probably on the castle road right now and that you're mm -hmm. getting closer. Um, you get to the gate and you hear this sort of muffle, right? Oh, man, it's all over it, and this kind of stuff. And uh, again, the horses G up and you are pulled through. I'm gonna make you much smaller, actually. And you're pulled through into the courtyard where you hear this, the, the click, clack, click, clack of the um, wheels, the wagon wheels, onto the um, onto the uh, cobblestones of the castle. Uh, bearing in mind not everywhere has cobblestones, most of it's like, it's like rough track and slab uh, slab stones and stuff. The cobblestones are very expensive, so clearly you're inside uh, the dwellings of this castle. You made it through so far. So far, so good, in fact, sir. Uh, Viz, uh, you are wandering on what is a beautiful summer's eve. Uh, the sun is um, uh, just starting to, to go down beneath the castle walls uh, you're walking on on the elevated pitch of the castle road and before you see the wagon in the distance uh, for a slight heart stopping moment you sort of see a, not an altercation but one of the guards is now like kicking a couple of the barrels and they're doing the usual boring prodding stuff you also notice that knuckles leans over shakes one of the hands a bit longer than a normal handshake would take of one of the guards and the guard sort of looks you see him look down into his palm and then smiles and goes on you go like that and the the wagon just like pulls forward uh, without much ado uh, as the other guard hops off so clearly everything's going to plan you uh see these two guards in front of you um and the one that was clearly bribed is on the right hand side this is the front of the castle where the portcullis is this is the entrance to the castle and people are, and guests and other people are walking in through this entrance so you're not alone on this castle road people are either arriving by carriage or they're walking through these are all like nobility and merchantile and the upper classes the rich people of uh grenier and there's quite a few of them around how are they um how are they are they handing have they got invites yeah they've got you get closer to the door and you see them handing their invites to one of several guards there's about three or four guards here the guard that spoke to knuckles is this dude um on the right hand side and the other three guards uh there's one guard here there's other guards inside of course uh but this guard over here and this guard over here are taking people's um papers and having a look at them and then waving people through jump down and I'll approach the guard that Knuckles spoke to, and I'll say, um, excuse me, uh, <laughs> did Knuckles talk to you at all about the, one of us getting into the banquet? 
Uh, you, by the way, just before you say that, to stop yourself from getting killed, <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the forged notes that you have is the invite. Um, that is the invite that you've got. You've already made the invite. You're aware that the invite is um, the piece of paper it was giving. You have a forgery in your hand just before you... So you might want to say something different. I am really sorry. Can we take that all again? <laughs> yeah, can of course we... you can. Yeah. <laughs> vum, 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 vum. <laughs> Rewind. Rewind. So you approach the guard with the, with the forged invite in your hand. Um, I sort of just... Um, is he the one that's collecting them or is he just... The, there's um... two of them collecting, one on the left, one on the right. You've approached the one on the right, which is the one that Knuckles spoke to and shake, shook his hand for a, 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 a socially awkwardly long time. But the guy looked pretty pleased about that. Okay. Um, well, I'm, so <coughs> I, I, I smile and I sort of, uh, I give him a little tip of my cap and yep. I pass him uh, my invite. What is the name of your fake, what is your fake name for this invite, sir? Um, I am the, um, Whatever you decide, please note it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or don't. Not really seriously <laughs> note it down. Or don't. <laughs> That's okay too. So, uh, Tom, what is the name of your uh, sort of nom de plume, not nom de plume, um, your fake name for your imposter, uh, your, your disguise and everything? Um, I'll be, I'll be um, Earl Grey <laughs> of... Um, T-Shire? Is T-Shire a... I'm just going to make it up. El Grey of T-Shire. <laughs> El Grey of T-Shire, great. So, yeah, so, I mean, you're dealing with essentially a guard that has the worldly experience of a wet kipper. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to be fine, probably. Can you please uh, make... Neil, yeah. uh, one, one thing quickly. Um, uh, even though we are in barrels, are we in a position to overhear this? Absolutely not. No, you don't hear this at all. Shh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so, Earl Grey of T-Shire. You go, Earl Grey of T-Shire, my man! <laughs> and you sort of hand him your, your invite. Uh, please make an acting test. Um, this is like acting, is that, and this is like a bluff test. But, fellowship. Yeah, so it's fellowship plus any skill that you think is relative to telling a big porky pie with a Let's forgery in your hand. See what I have. I got blather. Yeah, I've got blather. <coughs> yeah. What else got you got? Blather. Uh, I've got act. Okay, that'll help. That's another bonus, I would say. Blather, not so much, because blather is when you start talking gibberish. You're being quite clear with this guy. Okay, so, well, act is four plus ten. Fifteen. Ten. Yeah. No, it's fifteen. Is it? Yeah, like it's plus ten to busking, plus fifteen to bluff or gossip. Oh, nice. Okay, I didn't know that. Cool. So you've got a plus fifteen bonus to your fellowship. Oh, well, my fellowship's sixty-one as well, so I'm Dude. seventy-six. I've got a roll under. So handsome. Mm. <laughs> Is he, is he going to have a vagabond roll it? <laughs> I just know he's... 69! <laughs> oh! Yeah! 69! 69! Cool, okay. Great stuff, sir. All right. 69. Perfect for the bazaar. So even though you went, uh, my name is uh, Earl Grey of <laughs> T-Shire, and you had him the notice, he looks and goes... <laughs> <laughs> you know, T shirt. The guy goes, uh, all right, my lord. Um, and he just looks at it and he, go, he raises an eyebrow and, go, and he turns to his mate and goes, Is he the old grave T shirt? Is he? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Where the fuck's T shirt? I don't know. But I mean, I, I don't know that many places. Do you know where T shirt is? No, I don't. Well, what do we call him? You, is it Grace or Lord? I don't know. Go well, Call him Earl. You don't call him Earl. These two start talking like this, holding your invite. Other people are now sort of like wandering past. And another guard is sort of watching this and is starting to walk over to these other guards. He goes, all right, lads, what's going on here? He goes, oh, he's, he's Earl Grey of T T T Ip, of, of Rosip Shire, we think. Oh, we don't know what to call him. He's like, what are you talking about? He goes, we don't know what to call him. He's an Earl, not a Lord. Uh, well, we might be a Lord. I don't know what to call him. What do we call him? And like, they're just huddling now. Uh, what do you want to do, Tom? <laughs> you may all call me Earl T. <laughs> like, they all sort of start realizing that you've heard they've you've heard them go. Oh, uh, yes, of course, Earl T. We were no, we were just discussing how how fine your 
clothes were. <laughs> if one of them says, this guy just goes, oh, for God's sake, and just walks off this way. And the other guy sort of distances himself. I say, thank you, I made them from my fortune. <laughs> yes. uh, right you are, right you are, my Earl Grace, Earl T, Earl Grey T. He just hands you the invite, he goes, have a good night. <laughs> and just like, he just like turns really quickly and you see him going bright red. And he just like, like starts talking to himself like, oh, you bloody idiot, you've really blown it now. And uh, you wander through into uh, the courtyard. You can see at that moment, um, it's quite a big courtyard obviously, that the wagon is just sort of over here and just turning the corner towards the, uh, where the sort of stabling area for the wagons are. And also this is like the cook's entrance on the side here where they're going to sort of, where Knuckles is gonna start offloading uh, the, the stuff that they've bought, which um, which they've actually been hired for. Uh, but looks like, so far, so good, folks. Uh, Tom, I'm gonna to hold you there for a second. The entrance, actually, I should very briefly describe. It's it's really, like, beautiful. There's flowers everywhere. They've, the doors are wide open. The portcullis is completely raised. And there's a, a litany of uh, servants holding out sweet meats and drinks and cakes. And they're sort of all, as all these people start wandering through into the central courtyard, which is this massive kind of not open area, sorry, but it's a massive room, which all the rooms come off and these huge, these huge double uh, staircases like kind of go up from. Um, you, you're sort of really taking in the opulence of this night, and uh, how on one level, you know, I mean, you know, 18, 20 years ago, you were just a, a street kid uh, trying to you know fight over a, a crumb of bread. And now look at you. You're sort of in this place with these people, uh, hobnobbing and uh, and pretending to be something you're not. Um, cool, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, we just had a major system crash. But hey, look at this. The map's even better than it was last time. Almost as if there's been weeks between recordings. Weird, huh? That's it. <laughs> Very strange. Uh, really? Really huh. And for no reason whatsoever, I'm just going to refresh everybody's memory as to what we were doing a few seconds ago um so the viz has just skillfully infiltrated the castle grounds he is now earl gray of t-shire with his forged invitation and is wandering towards the castle gates uh the in interior castle gates as it were and the large steps that, uh, that go up into this magnificent ballroom that you see before you look how magnificent that is. look at that ballroom it even says in, like in bright letters ballroom on the, on the i like the way it's got barrels everywhere just help yourself to a barrel yes. of wine. Or, or apples, depending. You often find apples in barrels. Um, so there's a two, two kind of interior courtyards here. This is the window, of course, that we talked about earlier with a red handkerchief in your bottom or not, depending. Um, our other, bo our other uh, uh, Val's villains are over in this cart here. They've uh, exited their barrels. Um, we have the driver who's Knuckles, who's on the outside here, who's sort of surreptitiously gra grabbing his weapons and then starting to attach his weapons to his form. And then we have Tracker and also, um, forget the name on the tip of the tongue. I want to say Freddy. Freddy Pete Posture. Teddy Wheat Posture. There you go. Oh, that's where you're going with this. Yeah. I was thinking, hold on, who are we talking about yeah, here? Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Um, so, yeah, so Teddy Wheat last year, our wayward hero, of which this origin story ish sort of thing is all about. Um, around you, you see these very heavily, heavily armored um, guards who are wandering up and down. Um, in fact, actually, Tracker has started um, leaning out every now and again through these sort of curtains at the back of this massive wagon, this covered wagon, and is now sort of like counting footsteps as these, guy, as these guards wander back on their patrols. And they, they seem to be, um, you actually note, Tracker, that these are pretty pretty well-regimented soldiers. And they seem to know, obviously they're very familiar with the castle grounds. This is a structure that's been placed for a long time. They seem very right. well ordered, very, and they're very, very heavily armed. So this is, um, there's quite a few of them as well that you've seen on, on so far. Uh, so yeah, this, this place is bristling with, with, um, with good bad guys, if that makes sense, because you're the bad guys. Um, the Viz is starting to move <laughs> through. Val is, is coming around. She's dressed actually as a waiter, um, and she's already sort of already you sort of knocked out um, a staff member and dragged her and um, dragged him underneath the cart and stole his like various bits and pieces and, and probably like a little a little placard or a pass or something to show that she's staff member. And she's now wandering around the castle, flirting with a couple of the um, soldiers and. and other staff members and, uh, of the castle just to, I guess, I don't know, distract or something. And maybe she's just an irrepressible flirt. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where we are, folks. We are back into the game. <clears throat> the Viz. Um, and I guess yes. as well. So one thing, folks, we seem to have lost the initiatives. Can you just give me your initiatives real quick? Um, yeah, just no so, don't do that. 
Um, just so we can delete, hang on a sec. Just so I can give the initiative order down here. So we've got Teddy is 73 or something? Yep, that's right. Well, yep. well remembered. Oh, yeah, Teddy yeah. is phenomenal initiative. Teddy He's a quick is, little man. He is pretty cool. Um, okay, that's, that's not Teddy. Okay, so next up is the Viz, I guess. 41 for the Viz. Viz is 41. And Tracker is how much? Is 39. 39. Cool. Yeah, not far behind. All right, and you don't need to know anybody else, as I suspect at the moment. That's fine. Um, cool, so those are the initiatives. That's good to know. All right, cool. So last time we on on this channel, um, we had the Viz, who was stepping through. Um, Viz, are the... Excuse me, I think you'll find it's the Earl Grey of T-Shire. Of course, you're deep into your character right now. Uh, your character within... Your, 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 your character playing a character who thinks he's another character. Excellent. Method, um, I've got a... I've got a cup of Earl Grey on my go right now, just to <laughs> just to get into my it. Just professional writer it. here, Tom the Earl Grey of T-shirt. Yes, yeah, yeah, wrist deep <laughs> in his character. Very good. So in the, in the corner of your eye, because you're, you're too professional to look, but in your peripheral vision to your left, you see Val, who's now on schedule on time. You, you by the way, you Val and Tracker all have timepieces, um, which in except they are oh, cool. worth a, a small fortune themselves. Um, you've all synchronized them, so they're sort of like a countdown. Um, this sequence really, this bit of the of the mission really needs to be backed by that kind of Ocean's Eleven music, where they're all sort of doing their their bits of the um, yeah. plan. <laughs> we don't have the license fee money for that, but yes, if everybody could imagine that in their heads, that's exactly what this is right now. Was we jump cut around seeing various things that seem inconsequential at the moment, but later would be desperately cool and go, "Oh, that's what they're doing." Um, okay, oh, so montage. Point... <laughs> it's a heist episode. Oh no! It's, it's a heist <laughs> with a montage. It's a heist episode. All right, Viz. So you're wandering up. Um, you've already gone through the main gates and shown your invitation. So you don't need, as far as you know, you don't need to show your invitation again. However, the floor plans were scant, were were scant, uh, scantily um, revealed to you by Val at best. So you're not still entirely sure what the. You roughly know where you're going, but there's not like over here. You know, is the ballroom. These are stairs going up to the first. Heading up steps. Yeah. These are, those are steps. So I'm going up and then, whoop. Uh, then the, these are two staircases either side, aren't they? These they're, are. They're not, and you, they're you also not like see like a maitre d' kind of like caller announcer kind of figure. Right. Um, which you okay. know because you've got etiquette um, that you are supposed to introduce yourself to make a big show of who you are and everything. Thanks. Thanks for reminding me. DM. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> you sure they don't? I'm pretty sure they would just know who I am, wouldn't they? I'd have to tell them who I am. That's, that'd be very rude to they, be required to. They, they would know who you are who if you're completely legitimate, which of course you're not. You're totally bogus. So no, they're probably not going. In fact, actually, no, the, I... the matrix sort of shuffles towards you. Excuse me. Excuse me. And, excuse me. And goes. Um, excuse me, Neil. Yeah. The Earl Grey of T-shirt is very legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What does the Earl Grey of T-Shire do for a, uh, a funds, let's say? What was the, what was the background? He's into what? brewing. He's into brewing. He sells bloody coffee, doesn't he? He sells coffee from Araby. Okay, cool. He's a coffee He's a magnet. coffee merchant. Obviously. He's a coffee magnet. In fact, actually, the maitre d' shuffles towards you and goes, oh, the, uh, uh, and stops, goes completely blank, and then just coughs, like, really, like, <clears throat> as if to say, help. <laughs> like, she has no idea who you are. I, I sort of grit my teeth and go, the bloody Earl Grey of T-Shire. <laughs> she turns around and goes, the bloody, <clears throat> I mean, the Earl of T-Shire. Earl. She looks at you again and you say, Grey, Earl Grey of T-Shire. And every sort of, like, loads of women and men sort of turn around. In fact, some of the men and women start fawning, like, oh, oh, he's so pretty. And so I want to like, oh, so pretty. Huh? a coin into the, um, into the maitre d's hand or whoever just announced me's yeah. hand yeah and then at the last second it's like a trick coin which is attached to a little bit of elastic <laughs> string. Yeah. Just, just to kind teach of... them just to teach yeah them exactly class. right okay. yeah if yeah. you want you can make a blissit skill to make it really flary I, I mean i have i should point out i do have I mean, palm object, I'm guessing might help Ooh. with this. I think, I think, that would, I think that would. That's an extra plus. Let's put, give you a plus 10 on your roll. <laughs> okay, so what am I rolling? You're rolling a ballistic skill plus 10. Uh, plus 20, actually. It's, it's, it's a trick. It's not really to hurt somebody. So plus 20 to your ballistic skill to make this very, very cool. 
and very like passive aggressive know thy place kind of like, okay where are the dice there um, they are these two dice that i happen to I have just noticed that either the dice are massive or the figures that we're using for this game are tiny a bit of both have you shrunk shrunk the people yeah it was a really big <laughs> place or have you i'm, a actually, lot of I'm map, assuming you know? they the cameras they don't look that small I just zoomed out and out and out and suddenly the dice were there and they're like massive <laughs> I'm, not, I'm gonna squash people if i roll them the yeah. wrong way all right in front of the <laughs> rolling oh i, I rolled a pass. seven is a pass i think it's a pass it's yes a pass, it is right. a pass cool. so you do this really like really obnoxious but but also quite cool little like flick of the coin she sort of get, puts her palm out in slow motion and right at the last minute as it just tenderly touches the instep of her palm you snatch it back as her hand closes around it uh, yes. and i guess you laugh or something obnoxious like that. i sort of give her a little a sort of nasty little salute like <laughs> you know with two fingers like as as close to a, a highly polite f u as possible <laughs> okay cool. at that point you're immediately swarmed by uh young debutantes who sort of like and, and a couple of boys, oh. and a couple of, of good looking boys as well and ladies also, and gentlemen <laughs> and they all sort of so like lovely to be at this party <laughs> what's it for <laughs> plenty earl gray of t-shire for everybody okay can you make an act performance comedy te whatever skills that you have relevant to start charming the pants of the uh, of the local uh youth as it were i mean i've got so i've got blather blather's good yeah i've got act yeah that's useful as well i've got clown that's probably useful in a weird way yeah you can do that I mean, I could sort of do some... I'm not going to juggle it. not very old gray, is it? Um, well. <laughs> Just juggle the um, surf. <laughs> so what am I rolling here? So what, uh, it's Fellowship plus 30 I'm going to give you because you've got so many skills. Oh, well. It's an entertainment. Well, that would uh, make, so as long as I roll under um, a 91. critical failure. <laughs> yeah, so this is where I roll a crit failure, everybody. Crit failure. And, and crit failure. just like, basically, the I just... The more you roll dice, the more you tempt fate. Yeah. <laughs> And a... taking... Well, this isn't your main character, so he's actually going to do fine. Um, this is thirty. That's an easy, huge success. So yes, huge success. So whatever you, whatever con con in the stories or, or dualities or, or sort of flirtations that you wish to do, uh, you have them very much in the palm of your hand, uh, so to speak. I mean, I, yeah, okay, cool. I'm probably showing them tricks with that that coin and um, getting a waiter like, to come over and dashing their hopes. The... Little little thing, a little you know. If, if 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 one of the underlings doesn't meet your approval, then um, here's a little thing that I I like to play with. <laughs> I'm showing you the coin snap, um, <laughs> yeah. just to really rub an occasional glancing back at the um, at the uh, person on the door. You think, the she's, she, you think she's possibly fuming and and maybe even attracted at the same time as fuming with you? She's like, oh, that bastard. He's so good looking as well. Um, she's very much like that, so she's pretty herself. <laughs> All right, crashing back to Teddy and also to um, Tracker. Tracker. You've just seen um, another heavily armed uh, spearman uh, doing the routine. You've seen him uh, go backwards and forwards twice now, so you have a pretty good idea of the timing. You, you'll just, when, once the signal is given, once he starts returning this direction, you'll probably have just enough time with the other the other guard that you've noticed as well who's doing the other side of the court you should be able to dart between to this tree over here in fact you could probably do it now if you want to because then you'll be in sort of prime position you've got just enough time to both make it if you hurry and, and be relatively quiet and you, you get lucky was was there any reason why we shouldn't climb now was it this that uh, we might it's, be about, signal? it's about the timing so the second that because he's you know that he's got to set charges around the room and also he's going to poison and do a whole bunch of other stuff to people and create mm. some distractions and once yeah but there's no one on the roof is what i meant right so you don't know. Could... there's no, you have oh. zero intel about the roof so okay so, so we didn't see anyone coming in though obviously up there you can't it's it's a hundred feet tall you can't actually see above okay. it and obviously that you have no magic and there's no like you know no, 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 just coming in there was no one obviously sort of patrolling on the outside no, of the, the top the, of the... There's, there's, there's basically the the if you look over here this is how the roof actually looks like we don't know what's the interiors there's arrow slits around it like this um right. oh, and you think there's possibly some other like things around it so you have no idea how many men are up there at any one time there's probably somebody up there but it's 100 yeah. feet so they're gonna have longbows as well 
Um, and there may be some like siege, you know, weapons. I don't know if they're yeah. reasonable or not and stuff. So, so really, it's completely dead intel. So once you get up there, okay. you're gonna have to sort of formulate a plan. But that's why you're on a time limit. So that they're giving you basically an hour from when you go to when you have to get the vault open, or an hour, an hour and some change, basically. Right. Is it okay if I do a touch of role playing then? Please do, sir. Cool. He hairling. <laughs> Small boy. <laughs> oh, Thanks. God. You just the pits. What? Well, I'm just taking a look here, and I don't think you'd particularly want to get skewed. So what I'm thinking is that if we can get hold of some buckets full of water, we can hold on to them. When, when everything goes off inside there, we just go say we're going in there to fight the fire, and then we can get past guards. What think? <laughs> Where are we going to get buckets full of water from? Just, just stick to the plan. Luckily, Let's just bloody get to the roof when we can. He's got a really good point. <laughs> Where the fuck are you? I ain't got any buckets. Nobody's got <laughs> any fucking buckets. I'm gonna, you know, got it. I ain't got any buckets. Trust. Buckets just, weren't just, part just, of the plan, buddy. You know, like, you know. Let's just trust him. Gary the Brain yet. doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't make him sound anything other than Gary the Brain last time, so he's now Gary the Brain. Gary <laughs> the Brain him. resides inside Ratigan's head and is therefore <laughs> not supposed to be in this adventure. He's not supposed to be in this adventure at all, but he's just too delicious a voice to not use. <laughs> I, mean, I know he's also your dad, Neil. Dad. Um, so there is that, but... Um... Well, it's quite far-fetched, the idea of my dad being a pit fighter, but you never know, another life in the world. All right, so... <laughs> no, 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 so... It's, 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 it's a good point. You 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 go find some buckets, my friend. You go out there and <laughs> oh see what you can secure. Well, I was, I was just thinking that this being a um, container full of um, what's it barrels, barrels and stuff, we might have something, some sort of containers in the back here, which we might be able to look like we're going over to fix the problem over there. Because well, if we just run straight across with those two um, spearmen, they're just going to stab us. Oh yeah, no, the distractions are going to happen after your. The distractions are going to be in place, but they're not going to be set off. And right. There's a set off for like half an hour after you've been given the go signal. Okay. So it might be a good idea for you to scoot across now while you've got this gap in the in the sentries to get into right. the tree to wait for the signal to yeah, yeah. jump down and climb up. Okay. The, right. No, a big, that, that's there's cool. There's a big fuck off drain pipe here that goes the whole way up the building. Right. You basically, you two are going to be skinning up that very quickly. Okay, yeah. so um, we we still will from that position be able to see the uh, signal from the. Vids, oh, you'll be I right assume. next to the window. So actually, this is sort of part of the plan anyway. That at some point okay. you have to get to the tree oh, and okay. watch the signal. Otherwise, you won't really see it from where you are. Right now. Cool. I stand very much corrected. Um, right. Master there's, Teddy, there's, I think you should go over there. What it's, the, it's the good cover over there, Neil. Just the in case tree, this when, takes. Once you're in the tree, the tree is pretty bushy. It's a bushy tree. Oh, we can get in the tree. Yeah, yeah. Of course we can. Bushy oh, tree. Get in the tree. Why not? Trees don't. Trees don't eat you. Oh my god, do you think trees eat you, Pete? Is that why you don't go trees? It's chaos right? trees, chaos trees, man, they're everywhere. Telling, I don't remember, I mean, you and I have known each other since childhood, and I don't remember ever like teasing you about eat, trees eat people, but maybe we did. And that's, Look, you actually, I have that's a thing. tree, that's a whomping willow. To <laughs> be fair, it could be an end. It could be an end. But did we, seriously, Pete, this is like me having guilt now. Did we tell you and you believed us as a child that trees eat people? Because that's no, not true. No. It's absolutely not no. true. I don't think so. Anyway, I don't okay. recall. I don't I mean, recall there's there's all yeah, sorts of trauma in here, mate. I'll talk to my therapist about it next week. Tree. Okay, so just for <laughs> yeah. the record, if, if I did, I'm sorry that I did. Let's assume I did. But trees do not eat. I love the idea that these guys have just got bored of doing the plan properly, so we're just going to climb a tree. <laughs> <laughs> like kids in a playground. Oh, let's go climb that tree. Let's get some buckets. <laughs> <laughs> that there boys is climbing tree. <laughs> right. So what, what about this do? shrub here? Is, is is this a climbing shrub or not? What, what do you do, numbskulls? <laughs> Look, this is the fucking tree. It's why is the bigger than everything everything else? Right? I made it deliberately big so that you wouldn't fuck this up. So, <laughs> so bearing that in mind, numbskulls, do you want to just try and fucking you know? Oh, you're them? assuming I'm sticking to the plan, right? Do you okay, sure. There we go. Do you want to moonwalk hoo hoo your way across? <laughs> Neil, yes, yes, Neil. Yes, can I just say you're a little bit. Quiet. Oh, my little Just, quiet. Okay. That's better. Yep. That was instantly better. Yeah. It's because I'm Maybe closer you... to the microphone. Oh, oh there you go. You were a little. <laughs> right. sounded like you were across the room from the mic. <clears throat> I, was, I think psychologically it was just like you know getting back into this thing and <laughs> trying to get out of it. All right, so <laughs> yeah. So uh, so are you two okay. going to try and come across? If, to if, the if the timing is right and we've, we've yeah. ass, you know ass, assessed the yeah. time that is between those two people walking past, then yeah, obviously you have. We can yeah. As far as you as far as your brain cells will allow you, yes, the time is good right now. <laughs> Look, I, I do have a low intelligence. That is true. You have pretty 
Yeah, no, 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 so does Tracker actually. I think mean, Tracker is the brightest tool in the box. All right, you two dummies are going to mess this plan up. You completely screwed this plan. They're going to be thrown into the ballroom over his feet as like oafs to throw things at in about five minutes' time. All right, so um, all right, dudes. So the way this is going to work is it's silent move, urban, and concealment urban are your friends. So do you have okay, either uh, skill? Concealment urban, yes. Silent move, yes. Great. Okay, and so does, I think Tracker has as well, no? Um, I've got rural conceal. I that's don't fine. think I have urban. That's fine. Uh, actually, the rural will work because it is a big bloody tree. So that, I'm heading that's... towards a tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Where's my dice? All right. So if you want to do this one at a time, uh, or you can do it collectively, and I'll split the difference between the average between you. I was doing nothing again. Right, okay. That was what we're doing initiative. Yeah, it's initiative plus 20. I'm going to give you for your collective skills. I think that's reasonably fair. Do you want to roll it, Clem? Because I can't even yep. see the dice. 57. Um, um, and that's based on initiative. Yeah, what's your initiative? Yeah, what? to, 73 and let's, let's average it because it's you together, that's, isn't it? What's so, yours? 73 plus 39. Yours? Plus 20, 39. plus 20 on top of that. Plus 20 divided by 2, 66. Okay, that's a pass. Great. Cool. So you two together managed to uh, not completely fuck up everything. It <laughs> <laughs> made me really, really have to start a new adventure immediately. Uh, and you managed to like hoo-hoo your way, hoo-hoo your way, your way uh, into the tree. And <laughs> Jesus, can I actually get you in the tree? Nope, not at all. But damn if I'm not going to keep trying. <laughs> all right, so let's try and place you... Oh, yes, I managed to do it. Amazing. <laughs> there you go. Clonk. Uh, maybe not. Okay, you fall out of the tree and kill yourself. That's one person down. There you go. So you two are now in the tree. Look at that. Look at that. That's brilliant. It's fucking great. In fact, actually, you, you get there just in the nick of time as this dude sort of does a, a 180, starts walking back, and he manages to like, jump up, and he just stops and looks at the tree, and then Tracker <laughs> just like looks at him and goes, Uh, hurroo, hurroo, hurroo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, he's going to say, I am a bird. <laughs> that's I ridiculous. Am a bird. <laughs> I am a bird. <laughs> goes, tweet, Whoa. tweet, twiddly deed. In fact, that's what you say, and this guy's even stupider <laughs> than you are. He goes, oh, I was just a bird. And just carries on walking, <laughs> walking his patrol. <laughs> this dude's like walking back now as well. All right, cool. So you two are now safely in the tree. The Viz, you are, these people are eating out your hand. You've already had yes. several bedroom yeah. keys placed into your mm -hmm. hand um, without the numbers. So, um, so yes, you, things are going rather well. Um, to cause a distraction, right? That's what I'm doing here. You have to plan the distractions and maybe set some charges for later. On a t and obviously, these are going to be fused or activated somehow. We're not sure how, but you know, you can ad lib that. I don't mind you improvising these things because they're sort of like narrative things. So, like you know, if you fire something, fire like a hand yeah, dart at something. Say that, that but come on, what is the technology available to me here? It's not like I can do like radio control. Buff. No, but maybe you've got like a hand dart that you could flick at something that sets up, that smacks into it, and like you know, breaks something, and you know, in a in a vial, and starts smoke coming off, or these, a stink these bomb. These charges that I've got. Yeah. Right. How <coughs> are they sort of? Quite small and easily concealable. Yeah, I'm going to say that they've got time. You can they've got rudimentary timers on them. I mean, that could lead to all kinds of issues. I yeah, know, right? which you have to set. So they're not they're not it's perfect. Putting a clock on this mission, right there. Yeah. They'd probably be slow fuses of some description, so you'd light them up and they'd slowly burn down. Yeah. We're not doing that in the middle of a party. I think that might be quite noticeable. I think they're going to have to have timers. Timers or, or I think timers, man. I think okay. timers is okay. Timers I think the whole throwing dart thing is no, but you can have a throw dart with like a, a mild poison in them, for instance, like a hand dart you can throw into somebody's to somebody's leg or something, and that makes them be sick and stuff. Things like that. Yeah, so I've got those, but look, listen. All right, let's let's okay, say so let's say these pouches have little rudimentary timers. So once you set them, there's a couple like five minutes before they get set off. More. No, the first thing I'm going to do as I'm um, charming everyone and collecting room keys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can I'm up. scanning the room looking for points okay. where I could possibly conceal these charges. How do many you, have I got? You should have, two, I think you've got set trap as well. You've got like about five or six. Each of them do different things. So um, one of them is a smoke charge. Another one is like a kind of mild poison, which basically like a stink bomb. Um, you've got another one, which is an explosive. 
Uh, in fact, you've got two that are explosives, and you've got another one which is like a flashbang. So you've got one smoke, one flashbang, um, one that makes people sick, and then two that are actual proper explosives that will probably make people. Because I'm a charming devil, and I don't believe in collateral damage i'm not going to set the explosive ones the, those ones are sort of like last resort kind of like things go really tits up or you, if you need a, a quick exit or something like I, that i quite like the idea of planting the smoke bomb and maybe a flashbang um mm -hmm. around the room so that would be the first thing to do is look for points i'm oh, guessing yeah. them i should have i should say one of the one of the explosive ones is actually incendiary so it doesn't necessarily kill anybody it'll just set a Jesus. fire Still potentially lethal, so I'm 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 going non-lethal on this at okay. the moment. Jesus, he's one of those hitman players, huh? All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, cool. Actually, yeah, actually yes. Yes. All right, cool. And in video games, when I can go non-lethal, I go non-lethal. Well, it's very clever. So, I'm I'm really not that. Um. Anyway, uh, speaking of which, by the way, Sad Neil, I believe, is owed a fate point. We, I think I totally forgot to ask for that because I saved you. Your character was going to die. Like I can't move the three points. So oh, no, you can't. can't. Let me so. unlock that nice. for you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, buddy. Now it's movable. Yay. Oh, Take I that five points. Move it. I still can't move it. Can you not? I'll do it for you then, no. buddy. Okay, yeah. are you ready? Watch this. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and look at this. This is the upgraded uh, Sadneel 2.0 with god lines, <laughs> like god rays coming out of him. Sad Neil got a fate points. There you go. He's the god of fate points. God um, rays are an amazing invention. They are an amazing invention. Ah, Dominus is he a lighting is... source as well, or is that the candle? He's what? Sorry, this is a lighting, is it a lighting source. So it's a lighting source. Oh, I thought I thought the god rays were a lighting source. For uh, I'm going to say they are, and you have to believe that because that's how religion works. <laughs> sure. I, that I say, is thou are god rays from the light source. <laughs> it is dogma. You must now accept that or die. Okay, I so, could probably I could probably make it work if you gave me half a day with this program. No, I mean, it's really <laughs> that's, that's over. Here. But look at all these shadows. Isn't it cool? I, I really appreciate this this tabletop. Hey, hey can we uh, cool? get back to the adventure? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. I was completely distracted there for a second. Thank you for that fate point. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so, so... me and Tracker are sitting in a tree, not yeah. K-I-S-S-I-N. <laughs> Well, well maybe. Not... Well, <laughs> okay, Viz. So please make initiative roll. Do you have set trap and uh, anything like so excellent vision? Do, well, by the way, can I just explain what I'm actually doing? Yeah. So I'm basically going to start circulating. Mm -hmm. I've spotted two or three points. I'm guessing there must be either things like curtains or yeah, you know, around can... the edges of the room. Uh, yeah, they're definitely they're like drapes and curtains and some tapestries on the walls here. Uh, in the center above you, there is a massive uh, chandelier, um, which I'm going to try and color a little bit so you can see it a bit better. So these like this is a chandelier here, yeah, They're like this with little things. Yeah. Around it. Okay. Um, and that uh, has there is a tie point to the chandelier, where um, it's being sort of held up. It's like one of those like Robin Hood movies from the 30s like really badly designed chandeliers that are held up basically by one string. So like this thing over here literally connects to the top of the chandelier and is, is and if you cut that, the chandelier will drop and smash onto this table. Subtle hint there from Neil. I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> but yes, maybe. All right, and there is, yeah. a, there is a guard next to it, let's just say for, you know, make it more interesting. So yeah, so Val is now dressed as a waiter. She's now walking up the steps. She grabs um, a spare tray of hors d'oeuvres and swings round, uh, mingling, slinking, actually. Oh, fuck it. Let's use your words, Neil. Slinking through the uh, society, high society. And actually comes up to you rather cheekily, uh, Viz, and says, hors d'oeuvre, like that. She offers you something. I say, well, you are quite the snack. <laughs> she goes, oh. Oh, she laughs. <laughs> she, she does actually blush and smiles that smile you know so well. And then uh, goes, well, let me know if you want anything else to eat. And then she just wanders off. But she puts a lot of sass in that walk. Unnecessarily so, perhaps some people might think. But you appreciate it. Uh, you okay, take your thing over. Can I place some bloody bombs? That's what I'm trying <laughs> to do. Right I know it's so embarrassing. Isn't it? People are always trying to talk to you. They're so popular. Uh, yes, you can place some bombs. Um, so the people waltzing around. There's a couple. There's a couple dancing over here. Um, actually, there's quite a few couples dancing. And um, you're going to hate me for this, Pete. I'm just going to copy. Oh no, that's a warrior. I'm not on him. 
Uh, nope, nope, bunch of food, nope. <laughs> okay, okay, fuck, fuck! <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, it's going on. I'm, just, I'm killing people well, willy nilly. <laughs> I'm just killing people willy nilly. All right, so there is, uh, yeah. You also notice there is a crowd of people, um, Viz, as you're walking through, you notice there's a crowd of people all laughing raucously, and there's somebody in the center of this crowd, and they all seem to be focused on him. It's kind of the attention that you expect on, on, on a regular basis, but there's somebody else now, which part of you feels a He's little... instantly my worst enemy. <laughs> He's clearly now your worst enemy. He also is dressed in, in great finery. Um, and he's wearing, he's actually wearing like what looks to be like a weirdly historical outfit, kind of like, like a Roman toga, but like more warhammery uh, than a Roman toga. But he's got like I've got gold. A plan for him. I've yeah. got a plan for him. I've got several plans for him. Okay, sure. <laughs> so, so, so as you wander through, you also notice the door to the vault. So this is a, there is a guard here who's standing. He's got a very, he's got a very shiny, very nice weaponry. And this is the guard next to the, um, the chandelier, um, lead as it were uh and this dude is actually standing right in front of the door that you're supposed to go through at some point so at some point you're going to try and have to get this dude out of the way so that you can make your and also val's going to be coming with you knuckles apparently some at, towards the end of this this entire affair is going to be basically there to like help you guys all get out and if anybody gets in their way he's, he's the one to deal with that so that's what knuckles is for basically so you, you also okay. notice actually a couple of doors here <clears throat> there's a doorway here uh, and here, and also here, um, there's another guard over here-ish, let's say. And there's a couple of, you notice the staff members, these are, uh, these are staff members, let's say. We should, we should use another person for that. These are staff members, and they're coming in and out of these doors, and they're carrying various things. So th and you can, as the doors open, you can clearly see these, the, the kitchens um, in here. It's one big, massive kitchen, basically. You're not sure what right. this door over here does. Uh, but these are staff members wandering through with all you know with trays. Val, actually, right. you can see Val on the other side of the room. She's also watching those doors and is now making Neil, her way. Can yeah. you give me the information that I really would require, which What's is that? where can I place these bloody bombs? <laughs> well, <laughs> these are all tables. So the barrels all tables, obviously. Um, I think mentioned that I think. Um, so these are all tables. Uh, there are obviously people are putting, picking up and putting down plates and stuff. It's kind of like a buffet kind of affair. And so these we, these bombs, can I clip them on the underside of it? that kind of thing you can clip them there's actually lots of like um linen and doilies and stuff hanging off of the table so you can definitely clip it to you could probably clip okay. it underneath yeah but you'd have to have a good reason to dive underneath a table let's say um so i can you... think of one or two <laughs> all right and there are also people waltzing and dancing around there's a couple of like large bags on the floor that people are dancing around for some reason um, are there any curtains or any drapes or yes. tapestries? Or these are, things so on these the are wall? tapestries. I'm going to draw them. So there are tapestries. Um, actually, quite a lot of them. Um, so let's just put some up. Uh, there's some. Ta there's a tapestry here, here. Uh, these are sort of like curtains and tapestries as well. And on this wall as well, there's a whole bunch of curtains. Do they tapestries. hang very flush, or yeah. does it look like they might? Gets away with putting something underneath one. Uh, this one's very large and isn't flush at all. Uh, these two are actually like halfway down the walls and don't reach the bottom. And this one over here, it looks pretty flush. And actually, there's a gap in between where the, the chandelier um, cable yeah. is attached to. There's a guard also. There's also a guard there, yeah. yeah. Okay, so as I'm basically after the flirt with Val, I am cruising around. Yeah. Um, you know, grabbing a drink, swinging a lady around, you know, on the dance floor. Um, and I head for this table over here, the one nearest the doors. Okay, you can move yourself. The staff, like the staff are coming in and out. Uh, I'm trying to, but it... Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, so I move over... Uh, <laughs> you fall over. Come on. <laughs> Man! <laughs> Lord, Lord Earl Grey of Teashire has... Gone under. Um, <laughs> Tea down, Earl Grey on the floor. I knew okay. I shouldn't have had my last drink. Um, so I make my way over to this table here. Yeah. Okay. And at that point, I um, attend, I duck down to tie my boot, mm -hmm. my shoe, my booty, my little Earl your Grey little, booty. Your Earl Grey booty. Your booty. And yeah. using. Um, all of my considerable uh, rogue skills. Yeah, I split the flashbang. Okay, under that table, sort of pointed towards the door that the staff are coming in and out of. Okay, cool. Um, Val actually sweeps past you, and she actually you you feel her take the handkerchief 
um, from you and goes, uh, and she she takes the handkerchief like from your back pocket as she goes past you, and, and she just whispers, "We need to speed up. Plans have changed." And she kind of starts walking towards um, the other side of the ballroom with your red hanky. So she's apparently taking. I'm trying to do some stuff, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but she's for, for whatever reason she's taking control of that. So you've got a little bit less time. You've still got enough time because you're pretty good. Um, but just FYI, you, you're gonna have to get a move on. So okay, you can make a dex check plus. Um, You've got loads of skills, haven't you? Like a sleight of hand and things like that. I'm going to give you plus 30 to your dex check, so you're pretty awesome at this. Dex check, sir. All right. Which yep. is Dexterity. My, excuse me. Sorry. I've got a frog in my throat. Um, so my dex, dex is 52. Oh, so it's 82. So, so quite frankly, if you fail this, then you're a vagabond. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen now. I know it is. Here we go. All right. 20, 28, perfect. Okay, great. So you easily slip and set the time. Have you set this for a specific amount of time? How long is this thing going to go for? Is it all the time? I've set it for... Uh, what is the time frame, agree this by beforehand, the way? right? What is the time frame of our whole plan? Is it sort of... You need to be setting these distra uh, mini distractions off, um, like in five ten minutes so you want to be setting up somebody throwing up or causing some kind of kerfuffle in about 10 minutes time this thing wants to be going in about 20 minutes time well, there you go all right that's so that's how long i've set it for uh -huh. okay mm -hmm. that's that's good to know all right mm -hmm. okay um, so that's one here so i'm going to put a little note down that you've made a you, this is now a circle that's a trap so that's now trapped this table okay yeah so without having we don't have to go through this too much but just tell me very quickly and place yourself because you've got a little bit of time, obviously. So let's go narrative. Show me where else and what else you want to do to, in terms of distractions and traps and things. Um, so next thing I'm going to do. Oh, no, that's a bit too sudden. Um, so this is the guy in the black toga here. Is, is he this guy here? That's no, this guy in... here. This guy here. I'll make him a bit bigger so you can see him. Yeah, this guy. Here. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So next I'm going to sweep by him. Yeah. I've got plans. I've got ideas. Um, have I got poison? So did you say I've got poison darts with like a mild... <laughs> Basically make like people a vomit, sick. A vomiting poison. Yeah, it's like people throw up on them. Um, can I... Um, can I throw... I'm going to... So is it, like I, is it like a little dart that I throw or do I... Yeah, it's stab something... It? You can do either. Yeah. You, you can do like a... Uh, like a um... What are they called in Dune? The gom, um, the gom Shadar or something like that. When you just like you nick somebody with it. Jom Jabbar. Jom Jabbar. Yeah, or you can throw yeah. it, oh, is it, is it. Is it a contact poison or an injected one? It's a contact poison. Okay. Oh, so I could just brush it on him? You can just brush it on him, yeah. I don't even have to stab him with it. No, no, no. You, you don't even, like, um, a very mild scratch is enough. Okay, so I'm going to next... I'm going to wander over to him. Um... So is he sort of in the middle of a conversation? He is. What can you, I, uh... you notice there's actually a guard near him as well. Um, there's mm -hmm. another guard that's sort of like it looks, and he looks different to the the other guards. He looks more like a bodyguard type of character. Okay. Yeah. So he's. he's well, I'm going to move in on him, and um, as uh, what I do then, actually, before I, before you know, he can properly notice me. Yeah. I go, Monty, how the devil are, are you? I wasn't expecting to see you here. He turns around and, and I sort of slap him on the back <laughs> and then brush my hand with the poison on it. I'm guessing it's a gloved hand yeah, you can across do that, yeah. the back of his neck okay. as I withdraw the... Um, how the devil are you? Okay, as, as you as you do that, immediately this dwarf like bodyguard, let's call him a dwarf, dwarf bodyguard just like slams you back, and you you sort of knock you, you knock into a chair behind you. It goes, nobody touches Count Uhu. <laughs> Can't remember his name. I think it was Uhu. Did you just say Count Uhu? Yeah, it was something Uhu Reinhardt. Remember we, we had this really major problem trying to name him. I think we ended yeah. up with the Uhu Reinhardt or something like that. Nobody that touches right, a Count yeah. Uhu. And he just slams you back, and and then the count who also looks around goes, oh, no, 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 please, 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 please don't be manhandling our, our, our guests. Uh, clearly, this fellow is a little worse for wear. And judging by the state of his clothes, I imagine probably not just the manner of his purse. And he goes, oh, and he looks around, and everybody starts laughing at you. 
and laughing at the little joke. Whenever Neo like, gives someone that laugh, it means he wants something horrible to happen to them. <laughs> it's like an indicator. Yeah, so yeah. so you've sort of done the contact poison. You've made it yourself a bit of a buffoon. Um, but everybody's laughing at you now. The dwarf is like eyeing you very suspiciously. Um, but the, the count seems to be none, none, none less aware about this. So yeah, you managed to, to do that quite well. Um, okay. Is it still my round now? It's kind of narrative, because we need a few things to happen before we can kick this off properly. Uh, Val is now halfway, uh, three quarters away across the ballroom, and is now like put down the tray, and is now sort of wandering down the oh, steps I'm again. I'm going to sweep on past them. I'm going to look. So what I'm looking for next is someone... <laughs> Um, someone who might, might have an item or something that looks easily pickpocketable. Yeah, there's a rather large rotund man who's uh, who's sort of bulging out of his um, dinner suit. He's also got like these furs on, very expensive furs, and um, which is kind of like a cape really. And he's, uh, he's he's got a big plate of uh, what looks like delicacies and sweetmeats and things. And he's sort of like laughing quite a lot. He seems to be very jovial, very nice guy, and everybody sort of seems to know him. And he's, he's bristling with uh, items on his personage and, and pockets and pouches and things. He's sort of got like a pouch or, or just something on his belt that yeah. I could easily snag. Yeah, easily. Um, you'd have to make a test for it, sleight of hand and pickpocket, sure. if you have those, which I think you do. So yeah. let's go plus 30 again to your dexterity. Uh, so that's 82 again, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I've got a roll under. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're doing all the work here, Tom. <laughs> I mean, I've definitely been set. I mean, but I guess that once this bit is over, then you know it's more. Yeah, I'm yeah. more into self-preservation whilst you guys do the dirty work. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair enough. Yeah, I'm sort of doing the covert kind of. Um, Fourteen. James Bond. Holy shit! Oh, that's nice. Okay. All right. Cool. So, so yeah. So I snag a pouch from him. Mm-hmm. Or something, you know, something that looks like it might have some value. And then I'm going to, um, I sort of circle around and I come back into his eye line. Yeah. And I say, excuse me. <laughs> um, <laughs> does, this, does this happen to belong to you? Oh, my dear boy, my, my, my pouch. And he sort of looks at it and crumbs fall out of his mouth. Oh, well, it'd be very kind of you. He sounds a bit like Boris Johnson, now, doesn't he? <laughs> That's very good. Oh, I'm, 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 the NHS is a fine thing. Let's sell it off. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Arsehole. So, yeah, okay. So, he, he looks at you and goes, Oh, it's just my pouch. Thank you. I wouldn't know. It must have fallen off. Let me buy you a drink. Well, I did it free, but, you know, I same say, thing. I just wanted to say, yeah. um, I noticed... Um, one of the guards over there, I'm going to point out, hang on, which are the guards? The guards are on um, the silver. Um, I'm going to note, um, so the one nearest the door. This to one, the, right. yeah. I noticed they had it in, the, on their, in their possession. Oh, well, that's it's rather... Yeah. It's not good at all. Uh, guards stealing things. Can you make a fellowship test, please, with Blather, if you want? Yeah, so Blather is a plus what? Plus ten, but Blather is basically nonsensical stuff to confuse people. So you just sort of spin yeah, well, your arms sort of and talk about it. That basically, it looked like they'd found it and were going to keep it. Right. You know, and and uh, that doesn't seem like a very gen you know gentlemanly thing to do it to guess at a party. Okay, roll your fellowship plus ten. My fellowship is fifty uh, sixty one, so I yeah. need to get under seventy one yeah. here. Oh, it's really nice having a character with high stats for once. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts before I kill all of you. <laughs> uh, that's a one. Oh, shit. Hang on. Is that, was that just a one? That was just a one. <laughs> right, I'll roll a ten. Yeah, what is this going to be? Uh, oh, so close. Okay, that was a ten. So that's eleven. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you, okay. he's, he looks at you and goes, Oh, yes, I am going to speak to his captain right now. Thank you so much. I didn't get your name, though. I mean, you seem new here. Well, I am, yes, I, I'm Earl Grey of Teashire. Oh, oh, of course you, you know, are. the coffee magnet. Uh, yes, the, the coffee magnet. Oh, yes, okay. He's, his eyebrows go, well, thank you very much. I'll make sure that everybody gets to know who you are. You, you're a hero, you see. And he starts wandering off and tries to... He turns away. I'm going to snag that pouch off him again. Yeah. Just for my own. Wow. 
<laughs> what his cash pouch? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal it again. Come on, take it. <laughs> All right, you can make it make the same roll again, but now you can do plus ten because you you sort of you know exactly where he's keeping it, and he's just like looped it back through the thing. I so. mean, like it's an automatic success. Yeah, pretty I much. Uh, I think it's unless I roll a critical over failure. Nine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's let's roll and see. This is where I get the crit failure. Critical failure. Um, Here we go. <laughs> no twenty. No, not at all. All right. Cool. So you managed. You are you, acing this today, you sir. To snag it back as he goes off. He starts trumping, like stomping towards uh, where he thinks one of the. One of the guys. This, in fact, he actually goes straight to this guy over here. He's and you can see because you've got etiquette that actually this dude's livery has different markings on it, and it means that he's like well, a captain. Or not captain, but certainly like a sergeant or something. So he's his superior. He's marching over to him now. Like okay, dude. So you've got a pouch on him. Which did you conceal one of your explosive pouches or something on him, like a smoke pouch or something? Did you swap it out for that? Such a good idea. I really wish I had. Well, you, you can do that on somebody else, but your time is running out because Val's now like disappeared down the stairwell. So you got. Well, I, I was just going to set. My last move was going to be setting the smoke. Um, why not do the incendiary? It's, it's not going to kill uh, anyone. It's I guess set I'm fire. just worried about burning people. I don't want to kill people. Mm. Um, but think about this, dude. You've got to set. You've got to set enough chaos later that you can slip down that stairs unnoticed, and you, all of you can get in and out, and then and then have a reason for everybody to leave. So you're going to have to do something pretty big just to freak everybody out to scatter the group. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so I will. Um... All right, so I'm going to set our. I'll, no, I'm going to stick to the smoke. I'm going to stick to the smoke. Okay. I really wish I'd actually stuck the smoke bomb on him. Well, you could so always you could always sweep past him and stick the sick the sick bomb the stink bomb on him if you want. Um, I quite like. Is no, is there a sort of very haughty looking woman, a, a lady, like a sort of yeah? Um, there's one of those ladies like the Carry On films, like you know what I mean, <laughs> like, like completely um, overdressed and and like still with yeah, an like a sort of um. Uh, one of the ugly sisters. Oh, 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 oh. In fact, you hear that from across the room. It cuts through you like a knife. Just as a chill down, he's like, oh, 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 like that. It's a I horror just think word. bomb her, then. Yeah, you or, can do that. Uh, right. No, I... I'll, look, I'm just going to set... Um, no, I'll stink bomb her. Okay, okay. let's do a stink, stink bomb Are you doing well. the smoke bomb as well? All right, yeah. Uh, so smoke bomb under the tapestry was my idea, because yep. I think it would fake the illusion of fire, fire. where okay. it went in. Okay, you can do that. So that's easy done because there's very few people around you, and it's pretty. You can just like pretend you're looking at the tapestry intently and then just like put it into the yeah. Fire. Yeah, that's fine. Can you do that? And you sweep round and you find the haw haw lady who's like haw haw haw, who's like oh, who's oh, who's oh. chatting to some of her friends uh, over here when they're dancing. Um, and you sort of okay, so you approach her, and she's like, she looks well, at actually, you. I'm gonna ask her for a dance. Oh, very Did good. You okay. For a dance. He goes, oh, well, it's terribly exciting. Oh, I don't dance, though. These enormous feet. She shows you her legs. She's got really bad gout. She goes, oh, these, my calves hurt so much. But I would love to have danced with such a dashing young... Um, who are you? She's quite old as well. I'm, She's like in the 50s. I'm, I'm, I'm old grey of Teashire. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. <laughs> Never gets old. Okay. Do you do, like, one of those overly, overly formal, like... Huge curtsy, yeah, like a, a very effusive bow with all the kind of hand waving, with all the trappings, with all the trimmings yeah. on it. Yeah, okay. So oh, just... yeah, you shy, and then I kiss the back of her hand. Yeah, it's, um... pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty slimy, and, and she sweats a lot. Um, but that's so you get anything for the job. Okay, so you you do that, and she goes, "Oh, make a fellowship test, please." Do you have seduction? Uh, uh I don't. Know. <laughs> I've got etiquette, but that's all. No, you know how to approach the rich. You just don't know how to seduce them. Okay, so just roll, okay. <laughs> roll your two uh, two dice. It's, it's your fellowship plus ten. I'm gonna give you. They just oh, get wow. a bit okay. too carry on there for a second. A little bit. <laughs> oh, so close, so close to a critical pass. failure. Pass. Fifty-seven. That's a pass. Okay. Yeah. Um, so she goes. Oh, to hell with the gout. Let's dance, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. So you start. I like your style. You start doing Madam. like you start doing the Beauty and the Beast routine. She's the Beast. You start like, like <laughs> beasting your way through this, like swirling her around and being all charming and shit. And other people now watch. That. Loads I'm of people are watching you now as well. I'm slipping the stink bomb into her. I'm guessing she would have one of those sort of purses that dangles from her 
Yeah, she's got know, a, she's got a, she's got a hat with lots of ruffles and everything's pretty ruffled actually. And one of those bodices that sort of opens. She on it with like got a bustle, you know. Yeah, she's got a bustle. Make, yeah, she's got a bustle. On. Like uh, like a tent, a bum like a tent. Yeah, I'm going to slip it onto that so it makes, basically makes it look like she's doing a massive fart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. You're going so, to stink bomb her bustle, sir. <laughs> yes, I'm stink bombing her bustle. <laughs> you are you're doing waltz number three, so at the moment, which is quite a complicated waltz. So um, and because you like setting challenge, so I'm going to make you make a dexterity check to to make sure it gets nice and snug in that bustle. It sounds way dirtier than it actually is, isn't it? All right. That really did sound. It's not in the slightest, but let's let's go with it. All right, so All right. roll dex okay. check, please. And sleight of hand. Oh, I really plus want 20. this one. I really want this one. And I want to. Forty-three, perfect. All right, great. So okay, yeah, that's perfect. easily done. So you slip it into the bustle. You spin her around. She finishes. She's sort of out of breath and sweating even more than she did before. And uh, she goes, oh, oh, it makes me feel like I was ten summers younger. What was your name again? <laughs> She's looking all spaced out. Earl Grey of Teashire. <laughs> and as that, you sort of like step back and start like crawling, like slinking your way back, still in the bow into the crowd, and then you just disappear into the crowd, just like fucking Assassin's Creed, man. It's great. All right, so anything else that you want to do? Otherwise, we're going to kind of wrap that I'm bit very up. Very happy with okay. that. Um, so I think that, you know, the chaos has been seeded. Okay, cool. So let me just do one thing whilst you're doing that. Mm, 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 mm. Nope. Okay. Lucky fuck. All right. So yeah, that's fine. All right. Cool. So you sort of look around. You do the sort of like a mag a, um, an enigmatic sweep around the room with your eyes. Um, but you, well, actually, what you're doing is just making sure that nobody's really cottoned on to anything you're doing. The maitre d, who was sort of you felt was looking at you, is now like being approached by a very pissed off uh, punter, and there's some kind of problem, some kind of pathetic like childlike need that they have and they're not getting fulfilled and so the matron looks very worried suddenly and is now rushing off to get a waiter who's trying to help her um val has disappeared around the corner okay so for teddy and for um tracker in fact tracker teddy can't see this but tracker um you see val from your vantage point um come out to the window she she actually has a one of those like pre a rolled cigarette which she's like pretending to take a break or something and you just see her right. sit on the window and she starts like rolling up a fag basically and as she rolls, she uh, pretends to sneeze and then just throws the, the handkerchief um, just outside here and the handkerchief just goes down. Uh, what are you going to do? We'll come to Teddy in a second, but what are you going to do? Hey, little man, I think we're up. That's the signal. Get up the drain pipe. Okay, are you going to go first? Um, yes, I am. Are the, uh, how are the guards looking on the... Um on the side are they uh, relatively close or a good good span away um they are literally um doing they're coming to the he's coming to the end of his he's still uh, three quarters of his so this dude's about to turn around in about 30 40 seconds okay how far am i going to be able to get out of eye shot and is teddy more importantly going to be able to get out of eye shot within about that amount of time do we reckon give the drain pipe mm, and the teddy will probably have to go after he's turned and walked but you can probably shimmy up quite a lot without being noticed yeah Okay, that's where I'm going to go. Right, so make an initiative test, please. Have you got a skill to surface? Oh, yes, I do. Okay, so you don't need to make a test for climbing. That's automatic. Um, right. But this is a test for sort of noise and quietness and stuff. Oh, okay. right. -o. Concealment, uh, rural, urban or anything? Or a silent move or anything like that? Um, I've got um, rural and that's it. Um, okay, I'm going to give you plus 10 because uh, I've just been kind today. Um, cool. Okay, so roll your dice, sir. You. What's uh, your initiative? Oh, yeah, I think that. Okay. Yep. Oh my god! <laughs> that is the worst roll you could possibly roll, dude. That is like a monstrously bad roll. Oh, is, you sucked up all the luck. That is a critical <laughs> failure. That <laughs> is a hundred. Well, I was a fucking luck vampire. <laughs> that is a critical <laughs> failure of the worst possible. So basically, you go. Uh, what was the last thing you said to Teddy? <laughs> what was the last thing you said to Teddy? <laughs> What was the last thing you said to Teddy? I can't remember, but I was thinking something along the lines of him. Must be careful. <laughs> yeah, you must be careful, little man. And as you, do that, as, you, as you do that, because you're sort of like leading out to sort of drop down very quickly, you're looking straight at Teddy as you say that. 
And as you say that, you basically, your hand misses the branch that you were going to reach out for, and you just fall straight out of the tree and land on the floor like, like that. Okay, this this tree, uh, let's say it's eight. You say it's, it's like a drop of six yards. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, that's too much. But four yard drop. That's double. That's eight minus D6. <laughs> and that's how many automatic wounds you're going to take. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, thank you so much for I this don't game. even care if I die, this is hysterical. This is brilliant, perfect. Okay, so roll it. What, move your hand, dude, move your hand. Five, okay, so you take, yeah. you take three automatic wounds. How many are you on right now? Where is your character, anyway? Um, it's the white one, oh, it's it white one down here. So, you've got, so eight, you're now on five, and <laughs> more, more importantly, you've made a shit ton of noise. <laughs> Alright, so you're now on five, I'm going to move it for you. So you're now on five wounds, as you don't Right. Know. Okay, oh, you no, got to come up with a plan to cover this. Yeah, and you go, like that. At that point, the guard nearest to you just turns and goes, Oi! You! Fall out of a tree! What are you doing? And starts, <laughs> and starts walking towards you with his with his sword. He draws his sword and goes, Oi! What are you doing? And starts walking towards you with his sword. Um, <laughs> all right, folks. At that point, we're going to take a little mini break and we'll be right up, back after this advert. See you in a second, folks. <laughs> Hi folks, hello. So that was the first part of our special with Teddy's origin story. I hope you liked it. <laughs> it was a hell of a lot of fun to make. Um, we've just completed, literally just wrapped on the second part of Teddy's origin special story, um, which we're, we're gonna try and um, air next week. We're gonna edit it a little bit and then we're gonna send it out next Saturday, I think, in the same kind of format we did this time. Um, there's a lot of really fun characters uh, <laughs> to the point where I, I really hate the fact that I tend to kill my darlings off quite pretty easily. <laughs> so let's see how long they survive. Uh, but we really hope you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, there'll be more uh, next week. So tomorrow is the regular show of the Vagabonds, uh, which will be um, which will be on um, at eight o'clock GMT, which is twelve o'clock PST, I believe. Um, and uh, that'll be back with the full squad, including Blue Owls Medic as well. Uh, which would be great. Um, also, this week we're going to try and do a bit more streaming, probably proper streaming and stuff. Maybe some Resident Evil Village, maybe some Back for Blood. Might even try and resurrect Neilheim if we can, <laughs> if you remember what that is. Uh, I'm going to try and start getting some more people on to do some interviews as well. But, you know, we're not professional uh, streamers. We're professional actors, directors, writers, and all kinds of things like that. So we'll try and get to it when we can. Um, anyway, thank you very much for being part of the community. I'm really glad. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and thank you very much to everybody uh, in the mod communities as well. Uh, both of our modding teams, I uh, really appreciate it. And yeah, that's about it, really. Thanks very much to the Vagabonds, as always. Thank you very much to you folks for joining our community. And yeah, we'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock GMT. All right, folks, take it easy. See you around. Bye.